When I was 19 years old, in 1983, I had something happen to me that has left a mark on me to this very day, and I have not told anybody about this before. But now I realized that if anything is going to happen, it does not matter if I talk about it or not. I lived in the countryside with my family when I was younger. There were six of us, four kids and my parents. I'm the youngest child, so I was left out of most of the family problems and drama. My grandparents lived in the house next to ours, so they kind of raised me as well, because my parents were at work a lot of the time. There was a large field around my house, surrounded by the forest that my grandmother took me to all the time. We would just sit there in the sun and have picnics together. We stopped doing that when I was older though, obviously, and later, I went there with my friends to smoke cigarettes that we had stolen from our parents. It was like our hangout spot. A lot of people gathered around here sometimes, and I have a lot of great memories from that place. But one memory that will forever keep me from it, and even my hometown. I avoid it as much as I can nowadays, and have for the last 30-something years. When I was 19, I was kind of a rebel. I don't want to put up with anybody's nonsense, including my parents, and as I was the youngest child, I must admit I was quite spoiled. All of my siblings had moved out by then, and one night, my father came home drunk, and they began fighting, yelling and breaking things around the house. When I realized I could do nothing to stop it, I rushed out of the house to have a smoke and was going to be back in an hour, hoping they would be done by then. It was around midnight. I figured I would go back to the field to check out if anybody else was hanging out there, be there for an hour, then get back. But when I got there, there was nobody else there. It didn't bother me though. I could still chill alone and have a few cigarettes before heading back. As I was working on my first one, I saw the sky suddenly light up. I would never seen anything like it, and I don't know if I was more scared or confused at that moment. It was like there was lightning somewhere in the distance, but I could not see it. I could only see the purple sky and I could hear no thunder. Staring at it, I noticed a bright circle approaching me from the sky. At first, I thought it could have been some government business or something, but why would they be doing it in an abandoned field? that had no meaning or value at all. Then I realized it was too bright, and I probably could not handle it approaching me any closer, so I began running away. I did not make it 10 meters away before hearing the flying object open up behind me. I stopped in my tracks, closing my eyes and praying to God to save me from whatever was coming. I turned around, and what I saw will never leave my mind. It has and will haunt me in my dreams and in my head forever. I know everyone is going to think I'm crazy after saying it, but it was nothing else than an alien. It didn't look like exactly what had been described in sightings and stories. It was green, but it somehow didn't seem like a creature, but more like a being. Light was going through it, but reflecting it at the same time. I felt like if I touched it with my hand, it would go through it but I knew what it was. It was as if it planted in my head, so I didn't have any doubts if it was real. Even though I knew it was not possible and did not believe in the supernatural. The last thing I remember is that this thing telling me not to be afraid, but without opening its mouth, which terrified me to my bones, all for a second before I passed out. When I woke, I was in the middle of the field, surrounded by my friends asking me what had happened, and what I was doing there. But all I wanted to do was scream, because I could not remember. And even worse, from what I remember last, I couldn't talk or listen to anybody, so I ran home, and the first thing I did was drink almost a liter of water in less than a minute. I felt dehydrated and disgusting. When my parents came home that night, I didn't know what to tell them. I didn't know or have the words to explain what had happened so I just kept my mouth closed. For an entire week, I did not speak to anybody. My parents felt guilty, because they had been fighting that night and they literally begged me to tell them what was wrong, but I just could not. 
and then I realized that I must continue on with my life. I wasn't going to get anything by being silent forever, and I needed to be strong if I wanted to survive. After all, God only knew what was going to happen to me next. I never mentioned this to anybody in my life. I was scared that if I talked about it, it would become more real, or that it would happen again. But now I know that was a mistake. I should not have worn the weight of this on my shoulders for so long now. I feel free. Whatever comes next, I am more than ready to face it. My friend has a pretty wild hunting story when he was deep in the woods of Iowa. This was back in 2009, and he's told me this story so many times. The details never change, so I believe him. He said he was deer hunting when he heard something large crashing through the woods. He got up to take a look. He saw what looked like a large dog, but could not make out any details because it was dark and early in the morning. He forgot to bring his flashlight, but whatever it was was headed right in his direction. He decided now was a good time to leave. After he did, he heard it coming for him. He turned and started running. He said the most terrifying thing was, like any normal animal, it was not on four legs. This was two, or bipedal. He couldn't make out any of the details, though, other than that. He said he had to stop running because he was out of breath. He looked back and couldn't see where the thing was, so he started going again, but he could keep hearing it coming after him, keeping up with him, not running to him or grabbing him, but almost like it was toying with him, paralleling him in the woods, or keeping up right behind him. He was running so fast, he almost fell, hitting his head on a tree stump. He looked back and saw it standing still. He could see the shape, but could not make out any details. But whatever it is must have terrified him. He said it was large, standing on two legs, and it had a large snout. Then he said it turned off and disappeared. By the time he got back to his truck, he was pretty shaken up and vomited. I don't know, maybe if he had come into that thing's territory or what somehow, but I don't think he would have made up that story. He's usually a pretty honest guy and would never lie to me. And I say usually lightly. I've never once heard him lie. I never once heard him lie or make up a story at all. In fact, I don't see any reason for him to. He has nothing to gain from this. And every time he relives the story, you can just see the fear and terror in his eyes. He hates retelling it, but I always make him bring it up. Anyway, that's his story. And personally, I don't know what it could have been. The fact that he mentioned it had a large snout and looked more like a large wolf is very concerning to me that that sort of alpha predator is out there somewhere in the woods. I mean, I thought he was talking about a Bigfoot, but this is something else entirely. It really makes you wonder what's really out there. I'm a 27-year-old male who works as a paramedic in Iowa. I was born here and have never felt the need to travel far from home. About a year ago, I was having a very hard time at work. I eventually developed depression from being exposed to human suffering virtually all the time, especially after losing three to five patients in a short window. I was prescribed medication and then sent to therapy. Things were slowly beginning to get better. During my therapy sessions, my therapist had asked me if there was anything that had happened recently that might have had a hand in my depression. At first, I could not think of anything. But then I remembered an incident from about five months prior. I was driving home from work one night and decided to take a different route than normal. I was driving down a rural road that I'd never been on before. And as I was driving, I saw something in the woods next to the road. It was huge, at least the size of a cow, and it was all black. The strangest thing about it was its shape. It kind of looked like a large man with very long arms. It stood very still in the dark, but I could tell that it didn't have any facial features, at least none that were discernible, and it seemed to be completely dark, except for small bits of white underneath its face. At this point, I decided to ignore it driving away, but I've never been able to really let go of what I saw fully. 
after telling my therapist the story, she recommended that I read up on the Skinwalker legend. I never heard of it before, but after reading more about it, I was convinced that what I had seen, the description of this being matched exactly what I had, at least somewhat. I can't think of any other rational explanation for it, and now I was beginning to understand the Skinwalker legend. I felt like talking about my experience might help me move forward. Since we aren't allowed to talk about our off-duty time at work, we don't have much contact with our co-workers outside. It has been hard to find somebody to talk to about this who will listen. I've recently begun a support group for first responders who deal with any type of trauma. I'm hoping that by sharing my own story, I can encourage or help somebody else who might be struggling. Iowa, I feel, is generally a pretty quiet state. There's a little bit happening outside of farming communities, but when this encounter took place, it was happening in a place that is well known for lots of paranormal activity, with some of our more famous ghost pictures being taken there. The area is also known for UFO sightings, and there have been a few Bigfoot sightings in the area as well. The area itself is a large wildlife refuge, with deep woods and lakes. The lake is swampy and has lots of wildlife in it. The area is a good place for encounters to happen, and one local man who grew up there told me he himself had an encounter when he was younger, a young teenager. The encounter took place in a tree stand where he was deer hunting. The area is a good area for it, with plenty of deer and turkey, as well as other wildlife. I happened to be talking with him about Bigfoot and Dogman when he mentioned his encounter. I wish I had the tape recording running at the moment. He said he was up there in the tree stand when he heard something moving fast through the brush below him. He wasn't sure what it was, but it was big. Whatever it was. It walked around the tree stand and walked off into the woods. He said that he did not see it, but he could hear it. He said it sounded like a bear walking on two legs. He couldn't see it because of the brush, but like I said, he could hear it. He said he was in the blind for a few hours after, and he was glad when the sun came up so he could leave. He was glad to get out of there. I even asked him if he had been drinking or doing any drugs. No. He's as sober and clean as a whistle. He said he was just a kid and didn't know what he'd heard. He'd kind of forgotten the experience until now. But I guess apparently this encounter scared him so bad and haunted him he does not hunt anymore or at least out there. I asked him if he'd ever told anybody else about it, and he had not. He's afraid of ridicule and people thinking he's crazy. I'm surprised I got him to open up, but he said he'd rather keep these kind of details to himself. Okay, so I'm a 15-year-old girl who lives in Muscatine, Iowa. The reason I'm writing this is because... I have had a dogman encounter, and I've kept it so secret. I was at a friend's house, and she was gone, so I was chilling around the house. My friend's family has a pool in the backyard, and it's also fenced. It was a nice night, and the pool was well lit. So, I was sitting on the edge of the pool, staring down at my phone, when suddenly, this thing that looked like a large dog hopped over the fence and glared at me. It had extremely long arms and legs that were completely disproportionate to its body. It did have a human-like face, and its fur appeared to be in patches. However, it was so strange. It had a large snout and red eyes. It was like a wolf-dog-man hybrid. It just stared. I was so afraid, I felt like I couldn't move, but when it did move, it leapt back over the fence and crashed off into the woods. I'll never forget the tree shaking violently as it leapt and disappeared. I was so shaken up, I did not tell anybody about it. I'm going to try and investigate the area where I saw it and I'll let you know what I find. I've also had another encounter, but, but this time was actually with a group of friends and me. We were in a cemetery in Muscatine on Halloween night. We are just messing around, trying to scare each other. We were right near a mausoleum when we heard the sound of a dog growling. 
we stopped messing around and looked around, trying to find the source. Then we see this dogman running across the cemetery. We were so freaked out that we ran to the car and left. That was my second. I've had a total of three encounters, if you count the first sighting. I would love to tell you more about my encounters, but for now, in this email, I think that's enough. I have also attached a picture of a dogman that I drew. I can't draw well, but I gave it my best. Thanks for reading and good luck with your research. Oh, and also, with my first encounter, the thing climbing over the fence. The impression that it left on me was that it was trying to sneak around, but it noticed I was there. When it glared at me, it wasn't angry or hateful or hurtful. It was more of a, oh crap, I've been spotted. Now I need a segue to get out of here. And I think it panicked and quickly disappeared. Of course, it didn't exactly portray that in its bodily emotions, but, but I believe that's the gist of what happened. My wife and I have had a lot of encounters and experiences with dogmen over the years. They began around 2015 and now continue on to this day. We have had several encounters on video and on audio. Our first encounter was in 2015, when my wife and I were living in a small apartment complex in southeastern Iowa. We were sitting in the living room, watching TV in the early hours of the morning, and we heard something outside the window. We looked out the window and see this seven-foot-tall werewolf thing looking back at us. We got up and left the apartment. That was our first encounter. Later on, we then moved to a house about a half mile away. We also had a lot of encounters there too. About a year after, we moved to the house. We were in bed and were awoken by something jumping on our bed. My wife and I, panic-stricken, jump up and hit the lights. We walked around the house but did not find anything. We did not see anything. So we went back. Then, we hear something walking past the window, and we heard something trying to get in through the window. We grab our gun, went back to the bedroom, and we see the same creatures before, this time trying to get in. So my wife shoots out the window, and this thing flees. It left a print right near the window, and the next morning, the prints were still there. The creature was this seven-foot-tall, werewolf-looking dogman, we even called the police and they came out. They also found the tracks. The tracks were from the same creature, and they were enormous. We also had another encounter a short time after. This happened in the middle of the day. We're sitting in the dining room, looking out the window, and we see the same seven-foot-tall, werewolf-looking dogman creature walking past our house. This time, though, it did not pay any attention to us. It just kept on walking. The thing was huge. Its chest was larger than I knew, and it had very long legs. It was also carrying something in its mouth, possibly a cat or a small dog, and it was fully bipedal, moving very quickly. Its hair was long and gangly, and its snout was also long, and had pointed ears. The thing that was strange about it, though, too, was that its tail was long, somewhat like a wolf but different. We tried to get our cameras and go outside. There were many tracks it left, but it moved back into the forest. There were also two sets of tracks in the snow, so I'm thinking there might be another one, or it's the same one just going back and forth between. The tracks were huge, and like I said, they were bipedal tracks. We have continued to have many encounters with these things. Dogmen. We've also had encounters with other things as well, and we're also having a lot of paranormal things happen to us, which is why we believe that this creature is drawn to my wife and I, somehow. We're also encountering a lot of things with Bigfoot. We've had many encounters with them. Now, I've had to be the one to do this because my wife is too scared to come out and talk about it. I hope you can take the time to read this. It would mean a lot. Best of luck to you. So... I work as a veterinary technician, and I live in the state of Iowa. I'm 23 years old, also a female. I have always had this keen interest in the paranormal and cryptozoology from what I'm told. 
At least, I think that's what you call it. Anyway, when my husband and I moved to a new house, about two years ago, I started doing some more research on local legends and myths. Shortly after moving in, we began experiencing some very freaky things. One of the first things we noticed was all the weird smells in the house. Something I could only describe as a mix between old wood and death. The smell was a constant, but it would just randomly show up during the day sometimes. The smell would last for about five weeks before finally going away completely. We also began hearing strange noises, like something knocking on the windows or scratching on the doors, but we never saw anything. It was definitely creepy. Well, one night, my husband and I were lying in bed, and we heard this loud screeching noise coming from our baby monitor. We jumped up, looked around the room, but could not see or hear anything. We turned off the monitor, and the noises ceased. A few weeks go by, and we're laying in bed again, getting a little more romantic, and we heard the baby monitor turn on by itself. We got up to check on our daughter and found that she was also sound asleep in her crib. No sounds, nothing bothering her. We have no idea how or why the monitor turned itself on, but it gave us both the spooks. Then, one night, my husband and I were in bed in the dark when we heard this weird crashing noise down in our basement. We both jumped up to go check it out. Both of us freaked. I had a butcher knife. My husband, a steel baseball bat. We got down there. Everything was quiet. We had sworn somebody broke in, but when we turned the lights on, there were no signs of any intrusion. Everything was fine and in place. There was nothing to explain the strange crashing noises. A few minutes later, after going back up upstairs and turning the lights off, we hear the noise again. So, we go back down to the basement. This time, one of our Christmas decoration boxes had fallen over. We have no idea how it could have tipped over on its own. It was in the very back of the basement. There was nothing else around it, no airflow, and nothing that could have possibly knocked it over. And plus, it's considerably heavy. Anyway, those are just a few examples of some weird things that have been happening. A friend of mine, who is very heavily into cryptozoology and the paranormal like me, told me about a thing called the Mothman. And after hearing about it, I almost wonder if our house is haunted by its presence. I try to spend time looking it up online, and I guess there's a Mothman festival in downtown. My husband and I are planning on driving out there to check it out sometime this year. I like to consider myself a very avid outdoorsman, and I know animals. I've been hunting and fishing them since I was a mere child. I've never seen anything like the creature I'm about to describe to you. In the early 1990s, I was in my early 20s, a young budding man. I worked at a security guard at a casino here in Clinton, Iowa. I would often work on outside patrol, making the rounds of the parking lot. I used to go outside at night, on my own time, and walk through the nearby paths in the forest, or over by Lake Kiowa, a local nature area on the property of the Casino Hotel Complex. It was an old habit from when I was a kid in Wisconsin, where I would explore the woods near my home. One night, in the early spring of 92, I was walking eastward on a deer trail that ran parallel to the lake. I can remember it was a cloudy night, and the temp was roughly 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It had rained earlier in the day, so the ground was wet and there were areas of standing water on the trail. I was walking with my head down, trying to not step in the mud or muck, watching very close where I was stepping. Something caught my attention out of the corner of my eye. Due to the movement, I looked up and see a large gray creature standing only about 20 yards away from me. This is just over in a clearing near the edge of the woodline. It was taller than I. I'm 6'1 and very broad-shouldered. It was there, standing firmly on two legs. But its arms hung close to the ground, more like that of a gorilla's. The creature had a long, snout-like face and small, dark eyes. It was staring at me intently, and I remember feeling an intense sense of fear. In an instant, the creature turned and ran into the woods. I chased after it, 
wanting to see more, but I could not keep up. The woods were thick, and the creature was moving very quickly. I shouted for help, but nobody came. I remember thinking that if I could just catch up to it, I could kill it with my knife. But I never got close. I searched for hours afterwards, but never found it again. I know what I saw, and there's no way this was a bear, or any other animal that I'm familiar with. It was something completely different, something supernatural. I still think about it sometimes, and it gives me the chills. I'm glad I was not out there by myself that night. Anyway, since then, I've seen other strange things in the area. In fact, one night, while I was working at the casino, I see this large group of people dressed in black robes exiting the parking lot. When they saw me watching them, they quickly disappeared into the woods. Anyway, what do you think these creatures were? Are they a part of some sort of demon cult? Are they ghosts? I still think about that creature from the woods every now and then, but I can tell you this, it was definitely real. There's no doubts about that whatsoever. I have never really had any sort of experiences with the paranormal, until about a year ago. My husband and I were at our friend's house in the country, in Iowa, talking about a Bigfoot. It's a conversation... Well, a joke, really, that we've had since we first met years ago. Our friend sat up straight in his chair and said, You know, my grandma used to say something was out by her barn, too. And my husband and I looked at each other with eyebrows raised, because this is his family's property. His grandma passed away a few years before. We asked him to tell us what she had said. She used to see a big black creature out by the barn, and one time... It even chased her all the way into the house. And my husband and I began laughing hysterically because his grandma was tiny. Once he told us that, it also used to knock on the windows at night trying to get in. We were convinced that she had either lost her mind or drank too much of the stuff they brew up there. Anyway, we said our goodbyes and headed home with him very close. About a mile from his house, we stopped at a stoplight and I happened to look over to the house on the corner. There, standing right by the large tree, near the fencing, was this large black creature. It wasn't moving, just sort of standing there like a statue watching us. And I couldn't shake the feeling. I've never seen that being again, but something tells me it's like that story awoke it or invoked it to come alive. As a teenager, I often used to go out into the woods by myself, but... After years of doing this, I began to sense something was out there watching me. I did not think much about it at first, but eventually, the intensity got so high that I began having severe panic attacks during my walks. I lived on a farm with many fields surrounding it for miles, where this thing could easily hide. And one day, when I was out in the fields near my house, I see this large creature out of the corner of my own eye. It was bipedal covered in hair, and its eyes glowed this ominous red. It looked at me for a few moments before running into the woods. I told my family about it, and they did not believe me. A few months later, my cousin, who lived hours away, told me she had seen the same creature. The thing had been seen by many people in this area over the years. Nobody knows what it is. Some people refer to it as a devil monkey, and others a dogman. I have no idea but it terrifies me. Anyway, that's my story. I've lived here, but I'm originally from a small town in Iowa. I was out with some friends, and we were driving down a backcountry road. This is when we saw something huge in a ditch right on the side of the road, and had to stop. I got out of the car, just to observe this thing, which was on all fours in the ditch, about five feet off the ground at its highest point. It had long shaggy hair, similar to that of a wolf or a werewolf, but it turned towards me and stood up like a man would. It didn't look like one, though. It was hunched over and had very muscular arms. I could see its face, although it looked sort of like a malformed face. It probably would have been too human, 
but this thing was too massive. Its head was large as well, sticking out from one side. The one thing that stuck out to me about this creature is that its eyes were completely black. No whites or even any color to them at all. I don't know if it had any pupils at all, because you couldn't see any. But I do know, or I could at least feel, this thing was staring right through me. Like something out of a nightmare you can never get rid of. I don't believe that this thing was a ghost. I think it was maybe a Bigfoot or something. It was far too big to be a human or any normal animal. And its muscles and how it stood up like a man, it makes me believe it was something. Something not from this earth. I'm not too sure what I saw, but I know it was something of the supernatural. And it's giving me the worst nightmares ever. The area in which we saw this is pretty rural. It's in Iowa, so surrounding by lots of fields and farmland, as far as the eye can see. There are forests too, but nothing too far by. Now, where we saw this creature was, well, no houses or anything, for miles actually. It was just us and this creature. Dark cornfields surrounded us on either side of the road. This creature, though, was easily eight feet tall, with long shaggy hair. Did I mention its face looking distorted? And even its build was different. It seemed to be shifting in the air as if trying to determine what it were or what to do. I'm not sure if this thing was friendly, because it certainly didn't seem so. It just stood there staring at us, like it was waiting for something to happen. Either way, I hope I don't have to look at it again. My boyfriend and I, we'll call him Alex, recently purchased a home here in Iowa City. We moved into this house about five months ago and have been seeing some weird things every so often since. Something about the house just does not seem right. We're not sure what it is yet, but here's our account of everything we've experienced. Every time we come home late at night, after one in the morning, there's always usually a light on in one of the rooms upstairs that faces into the street. The room is directly above the door on the second story. It's as if somebody had snuck up there during our absence. There was also an instance where one of us came home and heard what sounded like growling down in the basement. And then we also had heard footsteps walking across the floor above us, then down the stairs, like somebody was coming to greet us. The footsteps would always stop right at the front door. We've also heard what sounded like whispering our names at night, but when we go to investigate, there's nothing. We've experienced other things too, but those are the most notable. We've done a lot of research and tried to rationalize what's going on. We just can't seem to find an answer. Anyway, I'll move on to the real portion of the story. A few weeks ago, my boyfriend and I were driving around and we decided to go exploring some back roads, something we really enjoyed doing. We had not been on these roads before. We came across this area that was kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and it looked like there might have been a campground there at some point, but I'm not sure. There were no signs of life, except for these strange animal carcasses. They looked like to have been mutilated. We didn't stay there for long. It was getting dark, and we began getting really creeped out by what we were seeing. We also did not want to be out here by ourselves. The place had a very ominous vibe. The next night, we're sitting there in our living room, just talking, and we hear this loud growl outside. We live on a street that's relatively somewhat busy, so it's not unusual to think it could be a big dog, but this was different. It was very deep, very guttural, and it sounded right next to the house. It kept getting louder and more intense. We ran outside but did not see anything. The noise stopped as soon as we got outside. Now, a few nights later, we're driving back home from work, from picking up my boyfriend, and we see the light on in the upstairs room again that we had been seeing. We pull into our driveway, and as we're getting out of the car, we hear this loud screeching noise, like metal scraping against metal. It was coming from the woods right behind our house. We ran around back, but did not see anything. We shined our lights. At this point, we were pretty terrified. We've been trying to figure out what's been going on, and we think it has something to do with the animal carcasses we saw the other night. We almost wonder if there's something paranormal or supernatural happening. Not just a ghost, but there's some sort of demon on the loose. 
we're not sure what kind of creature could do this, or why it would be targeting us, specifically us, but we're scared. We've been staying up late, trying to catch whatever this is. Nothing has happened so far. Look, I don't claim to know what it is, but there's something not right about this house, or this area. We're rationalizing it and researching it, but we can't find anything that explains truly what's going on. We begin to think it might be a demon or a poltergeist, or possibly aliens, but we're not sure. We're looking for answers. We've also been thinking about the animal carcasses a lot, and maybe there's something about it. Maybe we're attached to it somehow, or we somehow caught the energy. We're almost wondering if we somehow attached ourselves to the energy of those animal carcasses. It's just a theory. We've thought about contacting a paranormal expert or a medium, but we're scared of whatever is happening that is following us It might be very dangerous, especially if it did whatever it did to those cow carcasses. If you're experiencing something strange and you can't explain it, I'm finding it's best not to try and rationalize it yourself, because sometimes it's hard to see things objectively when they're happening to you. If you think there might be something paranormal going on, don't stay in the house leave and get somewhere safe. We've also tried to think about what this could be, but we just can't come up with anything. Hopefully you have some answers. I had a very interesting story that I'd like to share with you. This happened about three years ago in our small town here in Iowa. I was working in a shop in town and had closed down for the evening, currently taking a break. The shop was only about a 10 minute walk to my home, but was on a road that is also near a walking trail. I decided to walk it since it was a lovely evening. As I walked, I noticed how quiet it was. There were no cars coming or going, and this made the hairs on my neck stand up. But I didn't think too much of it because I was just trying to enjoy the peace and quiet. I started to hear some growling noises looking up in the tree line, but I did not see anything. I kept walking, and then I heard someone running, and a very large dog came running out of the tree line across the road, and then back up into the tree line. The dog was brindle color, and appeared to only have one ear. It then stood up, and stared in my direction for a few seconds, before running back into the tree line. I stood there for a moment, trying to process what had just happened. I shook off the feeling and kept walking home. About a month after this had happened, I was riding my bike out of town on the other side, getting some parts for my bike. I was about a mile out of town, on the same road that I had been on the night of my sighting. I had pulled off to the side of the road to see what was in my basket. I heard a tree branch cracking behind me. I stood up and faced, and I saw a very large dog standing on its hind legs. It was about 20 feet now in front of me, looking at me. I froze. It didn't move for about two minutes, and I was able to see it very well, even in the twilight. I was surprised at the color of its coat. It was a light brown color, and I was able to see its eyes clearly, and it was just staring at me. Then I heard a car coming, so the dog hurried off into the tree line. I got on my bike, pedaled as fast as I could, and never went out of town again after that. I didn't tell anybody about what I had seen for a long time, but I finally told my girlfriend about it just a few years ago. I told her about my sighting, and she asked me if I'd ever seen some of the werewolf movies. I told her I had not. She told me there had been a lot of people in the area who had sightings of dogmen. I was surprised I had not heard about it, I decided to go and try and watch as many werewolf movies as I could to try and find what was closest. I could not find one that was close to exactly what I saw, but if I had to pick one, I would probably say The Howling. During my drive home from work, on about 10.30pm on a cold December night, I had to stop at a red light. And my car was idling, and I was still. I heard a noise coming from the woods on my side. It almost kind of sounded like a yelp, but it got louder and louder and also got closer. I didn't believe in the concept of werewolves back then. I pulled up 
looked out my window, and I see this incredibly large dog running towards me. It looked like a mutt in the darkness. It then ran past my window, across the road, and into the woods on the other side. I was so scared I could not get my car to go back to drive. I sat there until the light turned green, and finally pulled it together, rushing home. Even though I still did not believe in werewolves or any type of shapeshifter, I know what I saw. I have never heard of any other monster running around in Iowa, but I'm sure that it's some sort of wolf monster. Me and my friends were driving around one night, looking for a place to explore, as we do. We came across this old abandoned mental hospital. We'd been there before, so we knew it was just an older building with nothing in it, besides maybe some graffiti and trash. We parked and worked our way. As soon as we got out of the car, we began hearing loud bangs and saw a green light coming from the forest. Maybe it was just somebody target practicing, but after the second time we went to investigate, we got close to where we could see the light, where it was coming from, and we all felt this weird sense of dread and panic, like something terrible would happen if we kept going. We didn't know what it was, and still, but we all had this very strong feeling of impending doom. We got out of there as quickly as possible. Now, the very next day, my cousin texted me saying he and his friends were driving around and saw that same bright light coming from that area. I had asked him if it looked like the light we saw, and he said it did. So it's definitely something worth checking out. So we go out there and look around. It seems like there was some activity where we seen the light, but honestly, we just don't know. That's all I have to say about that. I also had a similar story happen to me once I was out there with my friends. It was summer, and we were driving around of town, looking for somewhere to go. We came across this old abandoned farmhouse off the side of the road, like the old abandoned mental hospital. We had always wanted to check it out, so we went for it. Now as soon as we get out of the car, just like before, we hear loud banging on the inside. There was someone or something in there trying to get out. All four of us got back in the car and fled. Now. It could have just been somebody, but chances are, why would there be somebody living there in this old, dilapidated farmhouse in the middle of nowhere in Iowa? It just didn't make any sense. I've been debating about sharing my experience with this thing that has been stalking my husband and I at night. It all began with some weird sounds and howls, but then the howls became more aggressive. The next morning, we looked around the yard, and there were these large paw prints. My husband and I were really freaked out. Fast forward to two different times. When my husband and I were in bed, I've heard a growl. I've also seen two orange eyes, and my husband also believes he can hear werewolves. He can sense this thing. He believes it's a werewolf, but I don't. There's something different about it. I don't know, I don't think it can be a werewolf. I don't necessarily believe people can shapeshift like that, but then again, truth is stranger than fiction. Just look at the world we live in and what's happening. Anyway, I digress. The next morning, we looked around, and we found more paw prints in the backyard. We did not see it, but we had a feeling it was there, watching us, waiting for the right moment. My husband is a friend who also claims to have seen a werewolf, so we went over to his house to see if he could sense it as well. My husband claims that he could not sense this creature around that area, but we're not too far away and we border the same forest, so it makes you wonder. We've also had a string of strange paranormal occurrences. For example, I'll get strange phone calls in the middle of the night with nobody there, and it's these weird static noises. I've even heard these deep growls when I pick up the phone. I'm not saying it's the creature calling me. What I am saying, though, is it might be a demon or some sort of ghost. I don't know. I don't really know how to explain it. I'm pretty sure, though, that one time, when my husband was in the shower, I was looking off in the backyard and I saw the thing. It sped off, but I managed to see the back of it. It looked like a large wolf, but with no tail, and it was tall and upright. 
It had a very skinny body, and I don't recall seeing any fur. Its flesh, from what I remember, was more mange. I think it might have been a werewolf, but again, I don't know. I have a hard time buying into that concept. I don't know if it's a dogman or a werewolf or something else. I just know it's something stalking us. What should we do? Please help us. Thank you. When I was 12, my mom decided to send me to a Catholic boarding school on the southern side of Iowa. The school was located in a very old farmhouse, which had been slightly renovated. Anyway, it was in the middle of nowhere and had been very recently purchased by the Catholic Church. I will never forget the first night I heard this dogman. I was in the upstairs of the house, in one of the dorm rooms. It was very late at night. I had been awakened by a loud growl, coming from across the hall. I had never heard anything like this before. I was petrified. As I lay there, trying to calm my breathing, I heard the growl again. It was coming from the windows, and it seemed to be getting louder and closer. I then heard something jump up on the windowsill, jumping off and landing. I was paralyzed with fear, and at this point, was in a state of shock. The growl continued, coming from all around outside, and I could hear it walking around, sniffing. Now, this room that I was in had a very old heater vent that ran from the floor to the ceiling, and I could tell it was letting off this strange old smell. The creature must have smelt it. I could hear it sniffling. Anyway, after what seemed like an eternity, the creature stopped altogether. I did not hear it anymore, and when I felt like it was safe, I ran downstairs and just tried to tell somebody, but they completely dismissed me. After going back up to bed, I just laid there in the dark for a few moments, until I was able to move. I never heard, saw, or witnessed this creature again, and I never wanted to. My girlfriend and I were driving along in the middle of the night, after a long night of partying, when you see this large dog-like creature running right across the road. The creature had large ears, a long snout and large eyes. It had a thick furry tail and was running on all fours. It reminded me of a cross between a wolf and a bear. There were large trees to the left of the road, and the creature darted from behind the tree into a cornfield on the other side of the road. We were both stunned by what we saw and did not say a word for about ten minutes. After we finally got our wits about us, we talked about what we saw and began to do some research on possible sightings in the area. We eventually discovered that there have been several dogman sightings around the Cedar Rapids area. Now, some other strange things have been going on, like strange lights in the sky. We think there might be something strange going on there. I have since done some research and have discovered dogmen have been sighted in many of the other areas as well. I would love to tell you more, but I have to get back to work now. I wish I had more time to tell you about all the strange things that go on around here. And Iowa itself is a pretty creepy state, if you only knew half of the things that went on. Not just strange wolf-like creatures, but the ghosts and demons and hauntings. I think that's all I can really say. Anyway, if you're doing some more paranormal research, keep an eye on Iowa. I have a feeling that Iowa is not done yet. I don't really tell this to too many people because they'll laugh at me and call me crazy. But I feel like after listening to all your episodes, you're one of the very few people that would actually believe me. I was in my late teens. This was around 2008. I was coming back from a friend's house at around 2.30 in the morning and was driving down a backcountry road. I came to a stop sign and stopped. That's when I see this strange, big black dog creature moving. It had a tail and canine legs and a wolf-like head. It moved fast. In fact, so much so, I was simply stunned by what I was seeing and was afraid to continue driving, actually. And I ended up turning around and going back to my friend's house. After that, I was too afraid to drive anymore by myself, 
so I didn't really go back out much after that happened. I've always wondered if that thing was out hunting me, or if we just happened to cross paths. I'm not sure if I believe in the whole dogman legends, but I know what I saw that night wasn't a normal dog. It was not a wolf either. This was much bigger, and moved like nothing I've ever seen. I hope you can use my story on your show. I know you have a lot of listeners, and I hope somebody out there can help me figure out what this thing was. It was no doubt, possibly some sort of paranormal creature. Maybe a dogman? I don't know. This happened back in July of 1992. I was only 13 years old. I was busy spending the night at my best friend's house. We snuck out to a field to have a campfire. The field was bordered by a cornfield, woods, and a railroad track. I was on the lookout for trains since the train ran right by the field. I suddenly heard a growl coming from the cornfield. At first, I thought it was a dog, but the growl was far too deep. I then looked at the tracks, and there was this tall, slim man standing next to the tracks. He was kind of standing in a crouch and had his hands on his knees and was staring in my direction. I was terrified. He stood up and started walking toward me in all fours. I then heard him growl. It was this thing I would never forget. After that, he ran off in the opposite directions on all fours. I don't know if he was trying to scare me or what. I then heard a train coming and thought it was going to hit me. I ran back to my friend's house. When I got back to his house, his dad was outside looking for us. We told him what had happened, but he did not believe us. I don't blame him. We had snuck out. We then went back to the field and nobody was there. We were not allowed to hang out there again. I still can't believe what I saw. I'm glad I'm alive. My friend and I never really talked about what had happened, though, until very recently. I'm scared something bad is going to happen. I'm trying to be more open about it, but it's hard to when this sort of thing happens. Anyway, whatever it looked like, it was this strange animal-looking person. Like, if you mixed a wolf and an animal together, and a person, that's kind of what it reminded me of. But it was very strange, and forgive me because I suck at descriptions so you're probably laughing at me. That's okay, but I'm trying to give you my best description. Anyway, besides all that, maybe you can help me figure out what I saw. Or maybe it was just some crazy man. Living here in Iowa will sometimes drive you crazy. People here can sometimes have a reputation for being crazy anyways. I have a friend who was a veterinarian and had clients who had regular appointments with him. It was kind of his thing to visit them and their animals. Well, one client in particular had a Great Dane, which had been rescued from a house fire. This dog would not get along with any other dog. They were trying to, at one point or another, adopt the dog out, but had no luck. One day, they were at their appointment and the dog was in the home. They heard loud barking and then a crash. They looked out the window and saw the dog and this large wolf on the front lawn fighting. The woman ran out the door to drive this wolf thing off the property and the wolf took off running. The dog came back in the house with claw marks, gashes, and a broken leg. The vet was able to fix the leg, but the dog was never the same. Had the woman or owner not intervened, the dog would have been dead. The vet said that the size and weight of the animal was far too great for a wolf. The vet also said that the animal had a tail like a dog and the ears were pointed. He had never seen anything like it. Now, the owner really enjoyed traveling, and much of the time, the dog was kept at home in a kennel. They had a neighbor who was a hunter who would check up on the dog and kind of help take care of it. She felt safe. Now, during this, when the neighbor went to check on the dog outside... He had found the dog had broken the kennel open and was gone. The neighbor found the neighbor next door and asked if he had seen the dog. That neighbor said that he had seen the dog last it was running down the road. I guess he wasn't sure why. He also heard a loud yelp, and shortly after, 
looked and saw the strange wolf monster running after the dog. The neighbor had a rifle and ran to get it before shooting at this thing. He hit the creature several times, but the creature kept chasing after the dog. The neighbor also kept a trail cam out there, but somehow did not end up taking any of the pictures. He was sure it was something other than a wolf, but would not be sure what it was. He didn't know what to think. Either did the owner or the veterinarian. I live in the Carolinas, and there are plenty of swamplands around here. You can't avoid them, but if you grew up around here, you know the rules, and don't go anywhere near them without being covered in bug spray. And watch out for snakes and alligators. But what if I told you I saw something down there once, which made me think I'd take 100 mosey bites instead? Let me tell you about it. You see, I was driving back from work one night when I noticed the car started pulling and I realized I had a flat. I pulled over and checked. Sure enough, one of the front wheels was flapping. I work in a bar and sometimes the patrons get a little feisty. Must have been a fight outside and some glass didn't get picked up. And of course, I had to drive over it. Now, I know you're always meant to carry a spare. It was one of around a million things I had on my to-do list, which hadn't yet gotten done. So now, I'm stuck on the side of the road. Of course, near the swamps, because I couldn't have broken down in town with all the streetlights and people around. So I'm trying to decide whether to call AAA or a buddy to come help out. And that's right when I hear this strange noise. Of course, being near Swampland in the evening, there are all sorts of noises. Creatures that live in there go about their business. But this sounded different. At first, I thought maybe somebody was just passing by. That someone had seen my car and pulled over further down the road, which I'd somehow missed, and now they were coming to help because that was what it sounded like. Footsteps. Wet footsteps. Like maybe somebody had been wading through water. I looked down the street both ways, but surprisingly, I couldn't see whoever was making the noise. But that was because I was obviously looking at the road. When I turned back toward the swamp, I saw exactly who, or more accurately, what was making the noise. It looked like a lizard, but not a regular lizard. That would have been too normal. But never fear, because this lizard was humanoid-like. I didn't know that at the time. I just stood there, with my mouth hanging open, doing all the usual things like pinching myself, rubbing my eyes to see if I was truly dreaming. I was unfortunately very much awake staring at what I can only say is this lizard man, or what I thought of him until I got home and tried to do some research. The best way for me to describe him is that he kind of looked a bit like an alligator, with two human-like legs, only with a much thinner body and long legs. It's actually quite hard for me to accurately describe. I guess because my mind wants desperately to try and make sense of what my eyes were seeing. Yeah, he looked really tall, easily like a regular person, but was very thick and scaly, really powerful looking arms and legs. His head was just like an actual lizard or alligator, long jaws with large teeth and a snout, eyes that bugged out on the sides of his face. He was just slowly wading through the swamp water, heading right for me in my direction. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hazard that guess that they don't teach shop or mechanics to lizard people, so I can only think that this thing was going to hurt me. So I grabbed my phone and keys, and I ran, as far away from the swamp and my car as possible, until I got to the safety of some houses and streetlights about a mile or so down the road. 
Then, I called one of my friends to come pick me up. Now, he is a lot braver, or more stupid. Then, he drives back with a huge pickup truck. When I told him what I'd seen, he immediately wanted to go back and check it out. The shotgun he had in the back made me feel braver, but uh, still, there was the risk. We headed back to my car, which was still exactly where I'd left it, so I guess this lizard dude wasn't into stealing my vehicle. My friend Nate jumps out of the pickup, shotgun in hand, and starts shouting and hollering. But of course we don't see anything. I have no idea exactly what that thing was or what it intended to do. All I knew was I didn't want to hang about and find out. But as I said, once I was feeling a bit braver, I looked, and not only did I find your channel, I found a lot of similar disturbing sightings. So it seems lizard men or alligator men gets around, and apparently, judging from your other encounters, there's a whole family of them living around here in the swamps up in southeastern America. There are some things your mom tells you that you should really listen to. Of course, when we are kids, we always think that we know best. But listen, there is often a reason why they tell you not to do certain things. But we usually end up finding them out the hard way. For example... My mother told us kids not to play in the stream at the bottom of the field because it was dirty and boggy and you never know what you might find or catch in there. It was like telling us kids not to eat sweets because they'd rot your teeth out. Like a moth to a flame, we were drawn to the stream even more after being warned. So, one day, after a particularly rainy night, my little brother and I headed straight to the stream, knowing it would be overflowing, thus even more enticing. We played with sticks, trying to find newts, made newspaper boats, and did all of the things that any child would do near a stream. We pulled up our joggers and stomped in the muddy water, and that was when we saw the ripples. Ripples meant air which meant something was living in there rather than just the water and flies we had seen so far. This made us excited. Now, I have no idea what to be expected in the muddy, boggy stream, but what came out of the water would blow our tiny 8-10 to 10 year old minds. It, or he, or they, must have been laying low on the ground under the stream as when it stood up and rose from the water. There was no way he could have possibly been covered by that level of water otherwise. It was around our height, so about four feet or so, and looked like something straight out of a comic book. Covered in greenish scales, weird fins and gills, he kind of had a squat body and long bowed legs and thin arms and webbed hands and feet. I'm not trying to be mean. It was very amphibious looking, and it was kind of funny, but also frightening. Rising out of the stream was this creature, only he wasn't so little to us at the time, since he was around our size. My brother and I were caught between fear and excitement. Our mouths were wide open. It's not exactly what you would expect to see. I'd like to say that we weren't scared, but we were both terrified. We did not expect to see anything like that. He sort of just looked at us, unamused, then turned around and jolted off. We ran all the way home and didn't stop until we were back inside the kitchen with my mom, who just looked at us as if to say, See, I told you not to go into the stream. It's like deep down she knew we shouldn't have been there, and that maybe there was more dangerous things than what we could have thought. Of course now, this was so many years ago, but as an adult, it's fun to think back and realize that there are animals that exist that go beyond the realm of our imagination. 
I don't believe in Bigfoot, but I certainly do believe in undiscovered species of animals. As far as an explanation for what me and my brother saw, well, I have no idea what animal that was. People have asked me before if you ever really get used to living in gator country. I don't exactly know how to answer them. It's like asking if you ever get used to living around a hornet's nest. Sure, the sights and sounds will grow on you, but if you get stung, you get stung, and it doesn't hurt any less if you've seen them once a week or once an hour. So it is with gators. You get eaten, you die, no matter how used you are to seeing them. I've been living in gator country for my 45 years, and I haven't lost any arms or legs yet. I do think I have lost some nerves with some close encounters I've had, and one in particular stands out, since I'm not sure if I can really blame the gators for it. I had just enough southern comfort to make me braver than I should have been, and when I get brave, I like to go exploring. I want to take the canoe, the lantern if I need it, and go looking around. I know what a gator looks like, especially when it's trying to pretend to be a drifting log, and no amount of drink can blind me to it. It's a sight that I know by heart. But I came across something entirely new, really. It's a miracle that it did not cost me my life, since I went in to greet death, eyes wide open. So I'm out there exploring, driven by curiosity, fanned by the flame of a good buzz. The passages I could row down were getting narrower and narrower, and the reeds were growing closer together. I came to a clearing where I swear I saw what looked like tall green pineapples growing up out of the water. They had the same overall shape and texture, except that they had something like scales on the outside and the whole lot of things would twitch and bounce in a while. There was also the occasional burp sound, indicating the expulsion of either air or fluids. If I had been smart or sober, I would have hightailed it back home, but I wasn't sober. Like a big kid that had just discovered big pine cones, I had to see what sort of secrets those big scaly green things held. My knife was barely any good on them. I could get the blade under a scale and peel it off without great effort, but that was it. The things were well armored. I was able to comprehend well enough that it was some sort of egg or embryo, but I didn't reflect long enough on what sort of thing made them and whether said thing would be nearby to protect the brood. At first, I thought it was a gator rearing up to attack me. Then I thought the whiskey might have been spiked with something stronger than just alcohol because I saw what could have passed as a gator walking on its two back legs, keeping its balance just fine and holding its body upright with the grace of a cobra. The head though was shorter than your usual gators and the eyes were larger the mouth also hung open a bit, and all the teeth you'd ever expect to see were there. But there was an alertness, an intelligence in those eyes that I'd never seen in any gator's eyes. It must have been Mama, and she was not thrilled to see me. I took out my dad's revolver, which was empty, and aimed it at my attacker and she, or it, seemed to understand immediately, freezing in place. I abandoned my phone that I had just dropped in the water, and I ran. The last thing I remember was somebody calling my name from far away. After that, I blacked out. Apparently, my wife had come back looking for me when I didn't show up at nightfall. They had pretty much been on my heels when I was busy, tussling with my scaly little friend. I can't think of any other explanations as to why I'm still here. Whatever that thing was that lived in the swamp, 
surely would have eaten me alive if it had just been me and her. I have never seen an alligator like that before, nor do I know exactly what it was. I feel weird for even using the term alligator. While it resembled an alligator, a lot of its defining features were very human-like. So was it an alligator man, dare I say? I don't know. And its eggs. I found its eggs, or embryos. Either way, I am very disturbed, and hopefully this information will do better to you than it will to me. I was a part of a research expedition in the Amazon rainforest. We were looking for some indication that some plants could cure modern diseases. It's another big secret that the worldwide medical system needs all the help it can get. The locals had directed us to an especially dense grove of trees that produced these small strange yellow fruits. And no, not lemons. When taken back for research, it was found that early stage cancer cells dried up immediately by substances and proteins found within this particular fruit. And just to say my superiors were eager to get their hands and on only these fruits, but also on seeds of this particular tree so they could look into propagating them in a controlled environment as soon as possible. The natives had warned that not too much of the fruit should leave the grove at any given time. Otherwise, the forest would be angry. We thought that was a joke. Well, I was hoping that three small crates would not be considered greedy by the forest. I was nailing the last lid on the crate when we all heard a blood-chilling howl. Staring in between the trees were sets of large compound eyes that shifted colors primarily between green and yellow. They were set in faces that were mostly olive green with some molted gray and brown. At first, I made them out to be people that were covered in a great deal of war paint. Makes sense. Maybe we had disturbed the territory of some uncontacted Amazonian tribe. But then I saw that they weren't people at all. I saw teeth, like shark teeth, and lots of thick scales, claws that resembled meat hooks, faces that ranged from every structure resembling to a Komodo dragon to even modern crocodiles. I don't think I've ever ran so fast in my life. My veins were on fire, and my heart felt like it would have stopped at any minute. After a very long time, I looked behind me to see that the creatures were not pursuing me. I had tried to find my way back to that grove, and I never could. The expedition was considered a large-scale failure, and before we could leave the country, we were greeted by Brazilian military who confiscated our three crates and took the expedition leader and nearly detained him before giving him a good talking. We were told and demanded to leave the country as soon as we could, and to never return. I am not exactly sure why it was necessary for the Brazilian military to get involved, or why they felt it was necessary to confiscate the fruit and threaten us and demand we leave. Something is going on. I believe they knew something was up with that grove, and the warnings we had received prior about that same grove were probably in hopes that we would never venture to there. Who knows what we were not supposed to see that we had seen. I had taken a long fishing trip to a more isolated region of Alaska. Granted, every part of Alaska is considered isolated. A lot of places you can only reach by airplane. Where I was at was isolated, even by the standards of Alaskan natives. For miles in any direction, it was just me, and waters, and tall grasses, and pines, and blue skies. At least, that's what I thought. I was spending the night staring at the moon. There's something about it that's hypnotic and mesmerizing. I would then stare at the water. 
and I would then see disturbances in the water. At the time, I just attributed this to the fish, which made me look forward to the catches during the day. But there were some things about the disturbance in the water that I could not account for. Protrusions above the water that didn't belong to any fish that I knew of. And believe me, if anyone knew fish, it was me. In the middle of one night, I woke up by virtue of some deep down instinct. I was in trouble, but I couldn't have told you why. I consciously stepped out of my tent and looked around. I didn't see any wolves or coyotes or bears, but when I looked towards the water, I saw some hunchback shape with a long tail. I could make out the silhouette of long claws, a spiked dorsal plate that ran up and down the back all the way to the tip of the tail. At first, I gasped, thinking this was a real-life dinosaur that was probably hunting at night and would make sense since they were nocturnal. The movement of the water seemed very strange. That's when I realized that I was looking at more than one of the same creature. Perhaps dozens. They were pacing at the edge of the water. Each time I got something like a clear glimpse of their heads, they were turned toward me. I had a sinking sensation in my stomach as I was aware of the vast empty miles of wilderness that surrounded me. I could run for hours and not even see a single soul. I was alone out there with these things that were very much aware of me. Safe to say, I didn't sleep much the rest of that trip. A few of those nights I didn't sleep at all, and the times that I did sleep, it was out of sheer exhaustion. I don't know why those dinosaur creatures never bothered to engage me. Maybe they were just guarding something, and they were making sure that this human being wasn't going any further. Either way, I still see those shapes stalking me in my sleep, circling me like sharks. But that's probably my own fear and trauma of the experience. To this day, I honestly believe I saw real-life dinosaurs. I was driving home one afternoon through some thick farmland, admiring the open fields and thinking to myself how lucky I was to be able to have a steady job in the town and then come home to my house on the countryside. It was a glorious springtime day when the sun was just about still shining and the trees were starting to look green and healthy again. I was just enjoying looking around and taking in the sights when I saw something run out in front of me onto the road. I never travel too fast for this very reason on the windy roads, as you never know what might spring out of the hedges, and I have had a near miss with the deer before, in which I am still not sure of which was more startled. This thing was far enough in front of me for me to be able to apply the brakes carefully and ease my already low speed without causing any issues. And there were no other cars about anyway. This also gave me the chance to be able to see what type of creature this particular jaywalker was. It was some sort of lizard reptile. That much I do know. And if I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes, I never would have even believed it was there. And that would be because of the greenish scales covering its body. Where something like that had come from or was heading off to, I have no idea. There is water around here, but not exactly huge lakes or swamps. Still, it was there, crossing the road, a reptile of which I had never seen the like before. You see, unless most of its kin, it wasn't slithering across the road, or scampering on four little feet like a gecko. No, this creature was strolling across the road on two feet, upright, like a person, it appeared to have tiny legs and webbed feet, a long scaly body, and even tiny arms. It almost looked like a lizard, or an alligator had just decided that two feet would be the way to go. Its body looked all wrong. 
not that there was anything even remotely normal about what I was seeing. It was more like a human torso, but covered in green scales with reptilian limbs. And then was the head. Have you ever seen the creature from the Black Lagoon? That odd-shaped head, with like flat gills on the side. Well, that was what it was on top of this messed up long human lizard. It wasn't that tall either, maybe three feet at most. Once it clocked the car, it turned and stared at me for a moment, bug wide eyes, never blinking. Then it sped off faster than I never would have thought. I sat there, my car idling, wondering what on earth I had just seen. It didn't appear threatening, and I wasn't exactly scared more an awe and disbelief. After a few moments, when it seemed I wouldn't be making a return journey, I simply carried on my way home. But I'll never exactly forget what I saw that evening. A few years ago, I was on my way back from a work conference when I began to feel really tired. I know myself well enough to recognize that I needed a break and to try and catch a few Z's before I fell asleep at the wheel. So I pulled over the road into a lay-by and just closed my eyes. I must have needed it, as the next thing I know, I jolted awake and checked my phone. I had been out for nearly three hours, and now the sun was beginning to rise. Now it was brighter and I could see that I had parked very close to some water. A lake, or a reservoir maybe. I decided to get out of the car, just for a minute or two, for a quick stretch, as my legs were all pins and needles, and I had a crick in my neck from not sleeping, properly. As I got out, I noticed the car had some footprints. It wasn't hard to notice as the paint job is white, and the prints were muddy but there was something unusual about them. They were spaced out, as if whatever had taken a walk straight over my car had been on two legs, and even more bizarre, had webbed feet. For a moment, I thought about maybe a goose, as they have two legs and webbed feet, but on closer inspection, although I am no expert on the size of bird feet, these prints looked much bigger, as if a man-sized web foot creature had used my car as a bridge. The footprints were also pointed towards the water, so whatever had gone over the car had more or less plunged straight in. I could then also see that there was a large puddle on the roadside where the footprints began. I stared out into the water for ages, trying to make sense of it, but no matter what, I just couldn't come up with a reasonable explanation as to why I had a man-sized lizard footprint on my car that just disappeared into the water. So, I listened to YouTube channels for a while, and I found yours. And you seem to know a lot of stuff about this particular subject. Would you mind sharing some helpful advice? Dogs can be a blessing and a curse. They are great when they come and lovingly wag their tail. And they are fun when you needed an excuse to get off your butt and go for a walk. They are not so great when they need to go out at 10 p.m. when it is cold, dark, and pouring rain. Especially when they need to go and they've been trained not to poop in the yard. So that was why on a cold, wet, dark night, I found myself in the woods behind the house cursing my dog who seemed to be constipated by the amount of time he was taking to find a decent spot. I stood there, stomping my feet and blowing on my hands trying to keep warm, trying not to notice the rain trickling down on the back of my jacket, when I heard some rustling in the trees, not on the side where the dog was though. After all, we were the ones trespassing at the time, which is why I wasn't worried. The nocturnal creatures were ready to come out and play, and the last thing they needed was to see a human 
and a huge dog that wouldn't make up its mind where to squat. There was a sort of wet hissing noise. I know that sounds like an odd way to describe it, but that was what it was. A bit like when you go swimming and swallow too much water. More rustling and shaking of leaves, and I shouted at the dog to hurry up, or I was leaving him there all night on his own. Not that he understood or cared, but it's what we do. More rustling, and for the first time, I noticed that the rustling wasn't coming from the ground by around. It was the same height as around me in the trees. I thought it was odd, sure. It could have been a squirrel, but one may have been much higher up. And then it stepped out. The first thing I thought was that it must be some kind of kid dressed up. It was too late to be alone in the woods, and Halloween wasn't for ages away. But as I was just good staring at it, I began to think that if it was costume or makeup, it was Hollywood level special effects. From its feet to its head, it was covered in what looked to me because of the poor lighting. Brown, scaly skin. It was just a bit taller than me, and skinny as a rake, with long dangly arms and long legs like a supermodel would have. I didn't know if it was male or female. The torso was just flat, and I couldn't see any parts to give it a sex. Then was the head. It was flat and long, not round or oval like a person, but squat like an actual snake, with eyes on either side and huge lidless eyes. The dog noticed too, letting out a noise followed by a whimper while running over to me. That was enough to frighten off this snake and it kind of slithered off. I don't know how it could have slithered. It had long legs, but that's what the movement reminded me of. The dog began barking frantically and tried to chase this thing. I was able to grab him and pull him back to the house. He was at my heels when we got inside. He whined and begged and acted crazy for a while. Now I can't drag him into those woods when it's dark. I can't have imagined it. If the dog saw it too, that must mean we really did see something out there that we can't explain. I'm pretty confident what lurks beneath that I am not hallucinating. What are your thoughts on my encounter? I am very proud of my Native American heritage and have dedicated many of my years to researching as much as I can about my grandparents and their amazing folklore and stories. Tons of incredible legends live and breathe. A lot of it is downright fascinating, but some is absolutely terrifying. Thankfully, I have yet to find anybody who has had real life experiences with a Wendigo. And to be honest, I hope to hell that I never do. But another creature that is giving me many sleepless nights after researching it is something called the Pukwudgie. Now, you might be asking, why would a tiny, mythical woodland spirit scare me so much? Well, the reason is that unlike the Wendigo, I have a first-person encounter story, and the person who saw it was my grandfather. Now, my grandparents grew up on the res back before they moved into the city where my mom was eventually born. My grandfather recalls spending hours as a kid playing in the beautiful surrounding woodland. It was much simpler times, and without the technology, that is just second nature to children these days, they would have to entertain themselves for hours on end with nothing but the woods and sticks, sometimes building forts, sometimes playing hide and go seek, and other times children would be left to explore the great outdoors, as it should be. Most kids, however, found themselves playing hide and go seek. They'd split into teams and run off into the woods 
my granddad held the record for being the longest, and he wasn't about to let that slide into somebody else's hands. Running as fast as he could, he managed to cover a surprising amount of ground before he could no longer hear the shouts of 99-100, coming ready or not. He'd ended up in a fairly densely covered area, and was happy it would take a while to be discovered. Backing into the undergrowth, he was almost entirely covered in foliage. Boy, was he happy, he tells me. One by one, he could hear the calls and shouts of others being found, and it was hard not to laugh or even call out with glee. He was well on his way to a new record. That was for sure. But that changed when he heard a noise. To start with, he naturally presumed he was about to be discovered by another kid. So, he crouched down even further, hoping they'd walk past him without spotting him. He could still hear the sounds of his buddies running and the occasional gotcha from afar. And he began to try and work out which of the voices from the seeking team he couldn't place. Once he heard all three calling to the others, he figured he must have been joined by a nosy rabbit, or something. He wasn't at all scared at this point, just hoped the critter didn't give him away. More snuffling and crunching followed much to his annoyance. He had the perfect hiding spot and was about to be outed by a rabbit. He was also doing his damnedest to not sneeze, despite not being able to see a flower anywhere. There was a really strong floral scent, which was making his nose itch like crazy. And that was when he saw him. Now, I need you to bear in mind something. My grandfather was, one, just a small boy at the time, and two, crouched on the floor, this him that appeared barely came up to his eye level, but being short was the only unusual thing about him. The small man appeared to be gray in color, and his back and the top of his head were covered in spikes, like a porcupine. He had beady little black eyes, a large bulbous nose, and a sinister grin on his large oversized mouth. And my granddad knew exactly what this ominous little creature was. A puck wudgie. And he was petrified. You see, he had been told that if you ever encountered one of these creatures, you had to be extremely careful. If you made one wrong move and made them angry, they could and will kill you. And you wouldn't even be free after that tragedy. They would keep control of your spirit for an eternity. Needless to say, my granddad did what any terrified kid would do in that situation. He began to break down and cry. He was terrified, and just this mere presence would be enough for the creature to curse him. He burst into tears. He'll never know if that act was enough to appease this creature. That somehow, by displaying that level of fear and submersion, he had awarded the creature some sort of respect. But the little gray man looked at him, that awful grin still plastered on his face, simply disappeared. Poof into the air, gone. Too frightened to move, my grandfather stayed there for another ten minutes or so until his buddies found him. At first, they thought he must have been hurt. Discovering your friend, sobbing, with tears and snot all over your face. Curled up on the floor was not what they were expecting. Having managed to calm him down enough to ascertain he wasn't physically injured, they took him home. Only in the sanctum of his own four walls did he finally feel brave enough to recount what exactly happened. His friends listened in awe, whilst his parents exchanged knowing and worried looks. Thankfully, nothing more came of the encounter, and he had not been cursed or attracted the creature to continue 
to play tricks on him. It took a long time for any of the kids to go back into those woods, but they never saw him again. I love listening to your stories, and I will bet you that most others tuning into this will have heard of Sasquatch, Bigfoot, you name it. But I wonder what they might make of my story, or you for that matter. In fact, it was actually around five years ago now that I was driving home from a long evening shift. You see, I had my own experience with something that I can't explain, and I think it was something other than a Sasquatch. It's very typical. These stories always seem to happen at night, with no one else around to verify it. But I guess that's why so many of these things exist and haven't been hunted to extinction yet. So, there I am, minding my own business and driving pretty fast, since there is barely any other cars on the road with me. I'm singing along to some rock tune on the radio, drumming my fingers on the steering wheel, headlights on full beam, as it's hella dark. I remember having to slow down as it had begun to rain. So, I hit the wipers on. Just because there was nobody else around, didn't mean that I wanted to end up in a ditch. I cursed as the rain got heavier and heavier, because it was now making it even harder to see the damn road. To be fair, I'd driven this route so often, I could almost do it by memory. But you can never take the chance that a deer, or something larger, could take out your car, and might just choose the exact moment to run out in front of you. And, as if by magic, that was exactly what happened. Only, if this was magic, it would be the black kind, with pentagrams and satanic vigils. I slammed on my brakes quickly, and how I didn't skid into it, I'll never know. Stopping distance in the heavy rain is a lot more than when my foot hit that pedal, that's for sure. The car came to a stop, literally, right in front of this thing. I say thing because there's no other accurate words to really describe this creature. At first, due to its size, I thought it must be a man. But despite this initial presumption, as the wipers cleared the windshield and with the powerful headlights on full beam, I could clearly see Whatever this thing was, was in no way shape or form a human being. Due to the dark and the artificial light from the car, I was unable to determine exactly what color its fur was. Yes, that's right. It was covered in fur, like that of a bear. But this was no bear. I think it was gray. But to be honest, it could have been a bluish hue. It was huge. Whilst I first, as I was careening towards it, it looked man size, and now it was right in front of me. I could clearly see it was well over six feet, more like seven or eight, if I had to guess. Maybe more. Its head and face, well, again, it's hard to describe as I am pretty sure my mind was desperately trying to rationalize all of it. But it looked like a wolf almost, resplendent with giant wolf-like teeth and bright yellow eyes. So, apart from the fact that there was a giant gray-blue bipedal wolf standing in front of my car, I hear your listeners shouting werewolf or dogman. Well, here's the kicker. Staring right at me, just when I thought I couldn't possibly be any more afraid. It, and I kid you not, this thing had wings. You heard me. This giant blue bipedal wolf-faced creature had wings that resembled that of a gargoyle, like what you'd see in movies. Bat-like, tears and holes in them. Disgusting. 
It stood its ground, staring at me through the windshield, just gawking, a blank expression. No, I didn't try anything. This thing just seemingly looked aggressive. I was afraid to make any move. So, I did the only thing that I could think of. I didn't try to run it over. But this thing, whatever I was looking at, looked strong enough to pick up the car. And I didn't think for one moment that I could harm it, even if I tried to. Knowing this creature, had I rammed my car into it, I'd probably only destroy the front of my vehicle. So, I rammed my hand down on the horn and blasted it over and over, hoping for the best. When you're in a state of immense fear and panic, well, your brain kind of goes haywire. And you know what? Startling it at the time seemed to do the job, as it gave me one stare, a malevolent look, and took off. I sat there for just a moment, trying to stop my hands from shaking and then speeding off, burning whatever was left on my tires. At that moment, I didn't care about the wet roads. I just needed to haul out of there. Thankfully, I made it back in one piece, and you bet that I went straight to the fridge and downed a couple of beers. I'll never know exactly what I saw out there, but I can never forget its face. Its image, its entirety is forever burned in my mind. This is just a quick story that I'm sending you, but nevertheless, it is something that I will never forget. So please, hear me out. About six months ago, I was lying in bed one night, tossing and turning, and for some reason, unable to drift off to sleep. This wasn't wholly unusual when my husband, who is a cop, is on a late shift. So, I accepted that I was likely going to just lie there until I heard the key in the door. But at least I had one thing to keep me company while I waited. The baby monitor. The fact I could hear super cute gurgling from the baby and contented little snores from the toddler helped soothe me. It comforted me, even if I could not sleep when their daddy wasn't home. At least they could. As I was lying there listening, feeling thankful it was such a still night, as I could clearly hear both of them breathing, there was a sudden bang. Now, the toddler insists on sleeping surrounded by toys, so it isn't exactly unusual for them to start rolling off the bed during the nighttime, and the baby seemed to be used to it. I waited to see if there was a follow-up noise before I padded down to their room and risked disturbing their slumber. Nothing, and all was quiet, except their little cooing noises for a few minutes, and then a bang. This bang, though, was so loud that it caused all the lights on the monitor to shine. Still not concerned at this point, more like hoping to hell the toddler hadn't fallen out of bed. I headed into the room, still being quiet as a mouse. As I peered around the door, I could just make out their sleeping forms by the low beam emitted from their nightlight. Both were in bed, not that the baby could get out of the crib anyway, and both still fast asleep although the toddler was making those that I am going to wake up mumbling sounds. I couldn't see anything on the floor when I heard the bang again. As I was now in the room, I could ascertain it was coming from the window. At this point, I was feeling a little unnerved, but more still hoping to God whatever it was didn't wake up both of my children. Tiptoeing over to the window, I moved the curtain slightly and peered out. What I saw next, I will never forget. Thank God I had closed the window that night, because the banging was caused by a hand, a large hairy hand, covered 
in what appeared to be thick, coarse, dark hair. Maybe it was fur. I couldn't exactly tell. And to be honest, I was so startled and frightened, I don't think it really mattered. I couldn't help myself. I screamed, and of course, woke up both the children, who began crying immediately. I grabbed them both and slammed the door, racing into my room and gathering them up close to me. I heard three more loud bangs on the window through the baby monitor. Then, nothing. After their initial shock, both children soon fell back asleep. The toddler next to me and the baby fast asleep in my arms. That's how my husband found us just a couple of hours later after he finished his shift. Being a police officer, he grabbed his flashlight and gun and made a very thorough check of the inside and outside of the property. Coming back inside, he made sure everything was locked up and suggested that I try and get some good earned rest. I am not entirely sure that he believed that I had seen a hairy clawed hand scratching at the window trying to get in. He is far more used to dealing with human monsters. Oh, and there's one more thing. We live in an apartment building on the eighth floor and there's nothing outside the window except air. So what the hell did we see exactly? I'll never know. I guess this story begins when I was out for my morning run. I came across a flyer stapled to one of the telephone poles that actually looked recent. Nobody really put things up on these old splintered posts, at least around here. It was the work of distraught parents that weren't content to let law enforcement handle things on their own. It was a notice of a missing little girl from our area, written very strangely. I saw the official missing poster at the post office, the writing much more tame. I felt for the people involved. I honestly did. The distress they were in was palpable, even to me, and I had never even met the family. The child was something out of a storybook. Blonde hair and blue eyes, pictured in a set of pink overalls with a white heart in the center. Soon enough, though, I couldn't take three steps without seeing or hearing something related to the supposed kidnapping. I tried not to think about it while I was out for my morning jog. I don't mean to be cold. I just have to have a span of time where the world's poison isn't on my mind. So... When I came home later, I found something on my front doorstep. A large teddy bear, the kind that would never fit in a household washer. I looked it over, and there was no sign of who it came from or where it came from. I just wondered if it had been delivered by mistake. I noticed that it was hardly new. It was old and didn't smell pleasant. I couldn't think of who hated me enough to cart a heavy, musty, plush teddy bear onto my front step. But a new thought chilled me. Did they know my morning routine and thus know when to drop the bear off when I wasn't around? Then, I speculated that I was being watched. It was a horrible feeling, and I brushed it off. So. I dragged the smelly thing out by the trash bin for the next morning pickup. One minute, the garbage truck was there, the next it was gone, and so was the darn bear. I had uneasy dreams that night. Something dark had burrowed into my sleeping mind. I was dreaming about crying coming from somewhere inside the house, and I couldn't find it, no matter how I searched, and it was getting louder and I was afraid that I would get the attention of the neighbors, leading them to suspect that I was guilty of something. I awoke in a cold sweat to find that the crying was indeed no dream. It was soft, but real, 
and very much so present. I couldn't find where it was coming from, and I fought back a tide of panic, telling myself that there had to have been some rational explanation. So, I walked into my bedroom for the fifth time and froze when I finally noticed the window. There was the bear before me, staring in. I lost myself for a moment, the terror finally overriding all my senses. I thought to call the police, but what would I tell them? There was a bear in my window? The crying was coming from the bear. I steeled myself, thinking that this was one of those toys that recorded sounds and plays them back. Surely, this was just a trick. When I stepped outside with the bear, the crying had ceased completely. I was shaking, and it wasn't from the rain. I gave the bear a good frisking, and it did seem to have some weight inside of it that wasn't meant to be there. Maybe the make of the recording device that would tell me more. The bear was already cut open, the folds seamlessly pressing together. Something that smelled awful welled up into my face as I reached inside. The source was the decomposing body of a little girl who went missing, wearing the exact same pink overalls that I'd seen in the poster. Hi, I may not even be submitting this story to the right podcast. You seem to deal with all things monsters. I dealt with a real monster a few years back when I was only eight years old. I'm 14 now. My mother loves thrift and resale shops. Whenever she goes, she has to take me along for some reason. I get it that cheap stuff is cool, but how much stuff does anybody really need? Just because it's cheap doesn't mean you have to buy it. But anyway, she gave me the usual line of it. If I go with her this time, she'll get me anything I wanted. I was eight. It wasn't like I could refuse and stay home by myself, which in hindsight would have been nice. So, I'm dragged to yet another resale shop. They more or less knew my mom by name there. She went straight for the clothes, while I found my way over to the toys. Something caught my eye. It was a magic eight ball in the hands of a plush old-fashioned clown. To my delight, the clown was attached to an eight ball by magnets. I had always wanted a magic eight ball, and here I would get a cool clown doll along with it. For once, I was happy to be along for one of my mom's thrift binges. I played with the eight ball often and put it back in the hands of the clown when I was done. In fact, I named him Herman. One night, I was having fun with the eight ball rather late, asking it questions and shaking it under the covers by the light of my useless track phone. I froze in place when I heard some sort of shuffling in my room. It didn't sound like a full-grown person was around, but it didn't sound like an animal either. I couldn't place it, so I stayed under the covers and waited. I tried to lighten things up a bit, and I silently asked the eight ball if the noise was Herman. It showed up as yes, definitely. I fought off a shiver and forced a smile. I again asked if it was Herman, and he was looking for me in particular. It repeated its previous answer. I asked if Herman knew where I was, and it said very doubtful. Then, I asked what Herman wanted, since I knew it could only answer yes or no, or so I thought. It said, better not tell you now, and if you don't believe me, Google it. It's an actual answer on some makes of eight balls. I began trembling, and I had to fight it off. I asked the eight ball if Herman was going to hurt me, and it said, it is certain. No, this was getting far too strange. Surely it wouldn't answer the same question twice. 
I asked it, has Herman found me yet? And it answered, it is decidedly so. I threw off my covers so that I could turn on my bedroom light. When I did, I totally lost it, since Herman was sitting on the foot of my bed, but facing me where I was at the light switch. My parents came to my rescue. They naturally wrote the whole thing off as a bad dream, and I promptly threw away Herman and the eight ball, and I never bothered to replace either one of them. Well, the story gets even more interesting as time had gone on. See, I kind of forgot about the whole Herman thing. Until a few years later, I guess I found out that there was a rather large group of gypsies who had been donating many of the items and toys to that same thrift store that my mother went to. If you know anything about gypsies and their culture, they are heavily involved in maybe not necessarily witchcraft like black masses and killing children, but they do practice voodoo and magic to an extent. So, I almost wonder if maybe somehow being around that culture, there was a demon that had found its way inside that Herman doll in traditional horror movie fashion. I don't know. That was real enough for me. What I dealt with inside that doll was a real living entity. What exactly was its purpose? I'm not sure, but it seemed intent on wanting to hurt me. Please excuse my lack of knowledge, which is why I'm coming to you with questions, which I should ask you, if there is such a thing as a shadow cryptid, I call it that because I don't know what else to refer to it as. I had a very recent experience with one of these shadow cryptids, and it's just crazy enough to be worth sharing. So I checked into a cheap single-story hotel during a business trip I was on. I was dog-tired, and staying on the road just wasn't an option if I wanted to survive. I was in bed, lights out, when I heard movement somewhere. It seemed to be where I had hung up my hat and coat next to the door. I thought that maybe a rat or something had gotten in my room and was going to chew holes in my good coat. Moonlight was now streaming in and throwing a huge white square on the just spot I suspected the sounds to be coming from. And I didn't see any rodents. But I did see movement. I shouted on instinct. Hey! A slithering shape withdrew and rose up to briefly take the shape of a person before melting into something like a pool of ink, and then finally snaking out of my room through the crack underneath the door. I pinched myself to make sure that I wasn't asleep and dreaming. I got up, and against my better judgment, to check out what I had just seen. Opening the hotel room door, I stepped into the hallway and looked around. I saw it, slithering there on the floor. It stretched out like a sheet of dried black rubber into the shape of a person, yet again. A single red eye blinked at me a few times. Once again, it collapsed into a puddle and began racing away very quickly. I couldn't tell you for all the money in the world why I decided to chase after it. I was more interested than terrified. It was just too crazy, and I probably sound crazy for not ducking back into my room and staying there. I chased it, but it had no trouble of staying ahead of me. Soon, I became wounded, developed a side stitch, but I wasn't catching up. I also started to realize that the hallway seemed awfully long for a place that small. In the moonlight, I could easily read the numbers on the doors. They were repeating. By virtue of some nightmare law come true, I was running through the same repeating segment of hallway 
over and over again. It was when I realized this that I think I heard some laughter from the shadow up ahead, except it sounded very deep in pitch and distorted, kind of like somebody playing a recording of a laughter, pitch shifted, and played through a loudspeaker. I gave up the chase before I fell over unconscious. The simple act of turning the opposite direction brought me right back to my room. I overslept, waking up way too late to depart on time properly. I don't know if this was a fever dream or what. I tried to dig up some information on beings called shadow people, but here, the resemblance is very marginal. I get sick when I come near small, single-story hotels that look like they could have a history. So, I'm sending this to you in hopes you can maybe debunk what exactly I had an encounter with. Because I know, for sure, this wasn't a dream. I did come in contact with something evil. Hi. Me and my twin sister have a story for you about a living shadow that used to give us trouble. We're identical twins. She looks like me, and I look just like her. We were staying with my grandmother for an extended period due to fire damage to our house. My grandmother took care of us while my mother and father saw to getting our home back and up and running as soon as possible, however long that would take. I don't even remember what woke me up at night, but I had come to just in time to see my sister floating through the air. I thought that surely grandmother was carrying her, and I just couldn't see her for some reason. When my sleeping sister floated across the open window, I could see that she was being held by some kind of being of shadow. I didn't think. I automatically yelled out at the thing to put my sister down and leave her alone. This thing, whatever it was, jumped as if it had honestly been startled. My sister landed on the foot of my bed and didn't awake from her sleep. I was worried that she was hurt, but she wasn't. She actually slept through the entire thing. I thought that that was the end of that. Well, it wasn't. I dreamt the very next night about being a small infant and being in the arms of some adult that I could not see the face of. I felt warm and safe, and even drowsy, at least until I woke up. I wasn't in my bed. I was floating through the air, feeling a cold grasp around my body. I struggled and fought. I tried to scream, but couldn't. Something chilly and strong covered my mouth. At last, I fell to the floor with a hard thud, even though my heart was pounding. I could not think of anything else to do but find my way back to bed. This repeated every single night. I would wake up as I was being carried out of my bed by the shadow that tried to carry off my sister. I woke up a little later each time, and after about a week, I could tell that it was carrying me towards the cellar staircase at the far end of the house. I tried telling my grandmother about it, but she didn't seem to comprehend what I even spoke to her. I didn't know what to do. By stopping it from carrying off my sister, I must have angered it since it only bothered with me from then on out. The night before our parents came to get us back for good, I had woken up just outside the cellar door at the bottom of the staircase. Mother and father weren't a minute too soon. I was okay and I wasn't. I was fine and I was traumatized. Thinking about the whole thing was like reflecting on a dream and yet no dream ever made me shiver that much. I'm fairly certain this was some sort of poltergeist 
Last winter, I did a coffee roasting class. It seemed like such a great idea at the time. Meeting new people, learning something new, getting to try my very own coffee. The course was held in London, near Ealing, in a kitchen at the top of a block of flats. It wasn't a bad location, but it was a pretty rundown building. I was attending with one of my girlfriends, and we were both very excited. It's been months since the class, but I still can't quite comprehend what happened. There are some days it doesn't feel real, like I'm living in somebody else's body. At times, it feels like someone has taken over my mind. Every day, things for me have become dark and tormenting. I can't look at children's play parks like I used to, for my innocence no longer exists. Life has become dark, wretched, scary, and even lonely. My arms are filled with icy fear coursing down my veins, and I'm constantly bumping into things and dropping things. I feel like a ticking time bomb, a myriad of stress that is heading at a rapid pace into what clearly feels like a brick wall. I used to be easygoing and airy, but lately, things have gotten worse. Ever since I saw what I saw at that class, the instructor, a Brazilian man who was very flirty with all the women, and even a bit inappropriate at times, what happened was he whispered into my ear that he needed a special favor. My stomach nodded as I don't know what he was going to come out with. He then told me he needed me to go into the freezer and get some ice. I laughed and he pointed me in the direction of the freezer, which was just down a corridor and next to the bathroom. It was an odd place for the freezer, and I realized that I couldn't hear any of the others in the class. So, I walked into the freezer and kept it ajar by pulling the fire extinguisher off the wall and setting it down. It was so cold. Go figure. I looked around for the bags of ice that Mario the instructor told me about. I spotted them and grabbed them and went to leave. When I closed the freezer door and put the fire extinguisher back onto the wall, I noticed a strange sound coming from one of the bedrooms. It was like a horrible grunting or groaning, not the sound of what you would assume. It was like an animal, but there was no way this could be a domesticated pet. I've always loved animals, so I wasn't initially afraid, just curious. I continued standing there. A waft of something burning poured out into the corridor. It kind of resembled burning plastic or material. That was when I panicked as I thought the entire place was on fire. I knew that I had no chance other to investigate and that the owners wouldn't mind at all. I walked into what appeared to be the master bedroom, covered in blood, orange quilts, curtains, and carpet. There was an accompanying bathroom where I could hear grunts and groans and even smoke. What the hell was going on? I threaded carefully into the bathroom and my heart fell into my knees at the sight in front of me. It was a snake writhing around in the bathtub, knocking over stuff, and the bathroom curtain was slightly on fire at the bottom. Only this was not a snake. This thing had two heads, one of each end of its body. It was a two-headed serpent of some kind, except again, not like you would think traditionally but a head on each end. My mouth gaped open as I took in the horror of whatever this thing was. The creature was now gliding on the ground up and down the bathroom poles. It was well over eight feet. Its eyes too were orange and small. Little slits which seemed to glimmer and dart around the room. 
I wondered what I should do. It was clearly a hazard having this animal in the house. I almost wondered if this was his pet and had escaped. Surely such a thing was a danger. I looked around and spotted an axe next to one of the fire alarms. I then contemplated about whether I should try and kill it. As if reading my thoughts, it looked over to me, dead in the eyes with both heads, and both heads opened their mouths, exposing an extremely large set of fangs and an opening where no doubt swallowed and it could devour its entire prey. It bolted towards me, and at that moment, I was able to step backwards and shut the door. I ran out of the room, back up the corridor, panting and utterly breathless. I looked backwards to see if the thing had managed to break out of the room and follow me. Thankfully, it had not. I did hear a thrashing and crashing sound as if it was banging itself against the bathroom door, trying to get itself out. I had clearly aggravated the beast, and it did not like being disturbed. So, I managed to discreetly grab my coat and pulled my friend out before we went home, careful not to attract any attention. I had dropped the ice all over the bedroom. Mario texted me later that evening to see what happened, but I rang him back and told him all about the supposed snake. He then informed me that he didn't live at the property, but he went down to the freezer in the bedroom after and saw the ice scattered all over the ground. He then checked with the owners. They denied owning any pet, let alone a two-headed serpent. Mario then accused me of taking drugs in the freezer. My friends too thought I had lost my mind completely. Because the last year has been so crazy, I haven't really had time to fully process everything that has happened. Look, all I know is I saw something that was real, monstrous, savage, and clearly bizarre. I've booked into a counselor in hopes that they could shed some light on what happened. I have also looked into two-headed snakes online, but by our reports, the kind I saw only exist in mythology. I hope that my account can shed some light and hopefully attracts immediate attention so maybe others who have had similar experiences can come forward and not being afraid of being cast off as crazy. Even though my story sounds hokey or even crazy by many, I stand by it firmly and will gladly tell anybody about what happened. Who knows? Maybe there truly are others out there who have seen the same things that I have. When I was just a kid, I constantly found myself at my grandmother's house. I was always staying there. She was such an angel, but unfortunately passed away back in 2014. Her house was surrounded by fields and stretches of land that seemed to go on for an eternity. This was rural Alabama, and we ran barefoot through the fields with not a care in the world. Looking back, it was such a special childhood, free from all the distractions and very little access to screens or even technology. I felt as free as a bird on my grandmother's farm. But something happened as a child, something disturbing which I know I need to address as a grown woman. I believe that I encountered a real life reptilian witch I know I sound crazy, that if I give my name on this account, people will find me and think I have utterly lost my mind. But you don't understand, this memory has been stored in my mind and deep in my soul for well over 20 years now, and I feel like it's the time to discuss it. So going back in time to the springtime of 1998, I want to say late April or perhaps early May. I would have been around nine years old. Grandmother's house was surrounded by large fields, as I said, and on this particular day, 
I was going down to the apple tree, as she wanted to bake us some apple pie. So, I was running down to the apple tree and climbed up on the branches. The apples were green, and as I took a big bite, they tasted of spring. I filled my basket and got ready to take them back to my grandmother's house. I heard a chirping behind me. It was the most bizarre thing. I turned around, but could see nothing. Then the chirping happened and started up again. I turned around. Still, nothing was there except the stretches of long green grass. When I turned back to grab my basket, there was a scaly hand touching one of the apples. It was green and scaly and snake-like. I shuddered and looked up. Before me was this god-awful demonic-looking thing. The only way I can describe it was skeletal, and it was wrapped in long, black shawl. Whether it was a man or woman, I could not tell. Its eyes were open, bloodshot and yellow, fixed on me without blinking. The head was totally bald, showing scaly reptile-like skin and face, but almost like it was rotted away. There almost appeared to be little worms under its skin. The teeth were rotten and fang-like, and its skin was dark green to deathly pale. I tried to move back, but this creature, whatever it was, was fixed its hand on me and seemed to almost rock back and forth as it attempted to pull me closer. I had no idea what it was going to do. Perhaps eat me, kill me, kidnap me. I had no idea. From the creature's head, four large purple horns shot up, and this creature continued to grab me and hold me with a viciousness and savagery. I closed my eyes and prepared myself to die. When it wanted me, I was not sure. The next thing I remember, it released its grip from me and retreated into the bushes before disappearing. My hands were bleeding, and I had a large wound. I looked up to the hill and could see my grandmother staring down at me. She ran to hold me. I began crying and started to explain to her what had happened. She told me she saw it all. We went back to her house, and she told me a very similar thing had happened when she was a little girl. It was deeply traumatic. She told me this, and she never quite got over it. Grandmother and I would talk about the incident for many years to come, right up until her passing. We both never veered that we saw something supernatural, demonic, and terrifying. At times, this creature still appears in my nightmares, and I wake up imagining its scaly hand locked over mine. I still have a car where it struck its force into my childish hands. I am writing this now, many years after the incident, and I hope that somebody else can come forward and tell me they have maybe seen something similar. At my grandmother's funeral, we also baked an apple pie in her honor. I went up to the attic and had the urge to look out of the old tree, now neglected with age. You wouldn't believe this, but I could have swore that I saw the same strange figure submerged at the bottom of the trunk. I just shuddered and walked away, not wanting to see any more, and hoping that I wasn't truly seeing the horrors of my past. I am lucky I survived. I hope that I can connect with anybody else who has seen something that they can't necessarily comprehend. I hope my description is thorough enough. Like I said, the best way for me to accurately paint it is it was half reptile, half human, but it looked dead and skeletal, with patches of flesh missing, and what appeared to be little bugs under its skin. It's like it was a living dead creature of some kind. It was terrifying. What happened to me as a child vividly lives on in my memory. I know it was real. 
it still rapes trauma into my everyday life, even as I write this. Back in the early 70s, I saw something that I will never be able to fully understand and will certainly never forget. I was just a teen at the time, and even now, I can still vividly see him. Growing up on the Jersey Shore, we spent a lot of our time on the beaches and in the water. There would be an occasional shark sighting now and again and the beaches would be closed off. But it never lasted for long, and certainly, on the stretch of beach we frequented, there weren't any actual attacks. Of course, that didn't mean that the sharks weren't out there, or that they weren't killing other things in the ocean, and sometimes, we'd run down to the shore after school let out, and find all sorts of half-eaten creatures that had washed up, after Sharky had finished with their snack. Being teens, we were more morbidly fascinated rather than grossed out by it. It was often more a case of what was the sickest looking thing we could find. And I'm pretty sure the octopus that washed up with each of its tentacles bitten off halfway was one of the closest times I came to losing my lunch. But despite all of this, we never actually ever saw a shark. I wish we had, because what we did see one day, back in the early 70s, was way more frightening than any great white shark. And to this day, I have no idea exactly what it was. It was the end of summer, and it was evening time. Now, you may well have gotten an image in your head of the boardwalk, and the places in Jersey which are heaving with tourists, and I apologize if I was misleading, as this particular area I'm referring to, where we used to hang out, wasn't so much private, but it was a bit more off the beaten track, so only locals tended to visit, which was fine by us, as oftentimes it was just there. Anyway, so, it was late summer, late evening, but not yet night, so it was getting dark, but we could still see okay. And what we saw, I'm just going to come out and say it. We saw a gator man, or as I describe it later on, because we're not the only people to see this thing. A humanoid alligator. I was real grateful. I had some buddies with me at the time. Not just because it scared the crap out of me, but so I could prove I wasn't lying or hallucinating or something. After all, it was the 70s, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people were still using acid or smoking weed. But to be clear, we were not. In fact, we were all sober, and had been. Hell, my dad was a cop. He'd have beaten me black and blue if I ever did a drug. So... There were four of us, all completely sober, and we all saw this gator man. The best way I can describe him is he looked like a real tall alligator. Like, instead of having those tiny squat little limbs, so it looks like they're wandering about on their belly. It had arms and legs, the size and length of a person, but still covered in scales with claws, and a full of gator head with that long snout and huge teeth. It had reared up out of nowhere, in the ocean, but close enough for us to be able to see it. I think the water came up to like where its knees would have been. I have no idea what it did then, or where it went off to, because you can bet your bottom dollar that we ran out of there as fast as we possibly could, and did not look back. There were quite a few sightings of him that summer, enough for us to believe that it wasn't some sort of hallucination. But then he disappeared. What he was, why he was there, I'll never know. 
but I'll never forget him. When I was in college, I took a road trip with my roommate back to her home in Ohio for Thanksgiving. It was a long drive, to say the least, but the promise of a week of home cooking and free laundry was more than enough to make the journey worth it. My roommate was a lot of fun and came from a huge family, most of which I'd be meeting over the next few days. So, the trip went by fairly quickly, as she joyously told me the various stories featuring Uncle Lenny or her cousin Susie. We made sure to take plenty of rest stops and even had lunch at a mom and pop's roadside diner. We texted her mom whenever we had bars or service to let her know our progress. Things were going great. Then, we came to this strip of highway that looked like it hadn't been used in decades. It was like something straight out of a serial killer movie, and we laughed and joked about finding a broken down car on the side of the road. A Bundy-esque dude just waiting to club us over the head. Of course, since I'm writing into you to tell you this story, you know that didn't happen. Also, you talk about cryptid monsters and not humans. Anyway, whilst we were laughing and planning on how we would escape and be final girls, we did see something on the side of the road, but it was Bundy or BTK, obviously. This thing seemed much smaller than a person to start with. And as we got closer, at first, we presumed to be it was some kind of dog. I don't know why, to be honest, because even as we were approaching it, I could tell that it appeared to be a greenish color, and dogs don't tend to be that sort of shade. It also appears to stand up, because we could see legs. So, and we still are a little bit away. It looks like we are approaching something smallish, maybe around four feet tall, standing upright on two legs, and green. I can very distinctly remember that as we drove past it, as we were literally eye to eye looking at it out of the passenger window. Neither of us said a word. We were both completely silent for a good five to 10 minutes afterwards my roomie did not slow down at all, but she didn't speed up either. We just kept rolling. Finally, I do remember folding my hands onto my lap and staring straight ahead out the windshield. Not looking at my buddy, I simply said, Did you just see that really tall frog standing up like a person? She then burst out in what seemed like a relieved laughter and exclaimed yes, we both had a nervous laugh for a bit, and to be honest, I'm not too sure that either of us could fully quite comprehend exactly what we had just driven past. I mean, it's not exactly an everyday occurrence to see Mr. Toad from Wind in the Willows stood by the side of the road, is it? Of course, this guy wasn't dressed in clothes. That would be ridiculous but he was like the size of a human child, and he was most definitely upright, on two bowed legs, not crouched down, ready to jump on all four, like a regular frog would. It honestly went through my mind that maybe we had been poisoned or drugged by the coffee at the diner, because it couldn't possibly be real. But if we were, then we showed no other signs or symptoms so, what the hell did we see? Is there really a species of tall, two-legged frogs roaming the highways out here in Ohio? Was he trying to hitchhike? We'll never know. But we still often think about that frogman and what he is up to these days. I mean, after all, I think there was a pretty large swamp or marshland nearby. Either way, we try to make jokes about it, but it's still freaky because we both saw the exact same thing. I work in the mailroom for a huge corporate business. The hours are long, 
tedious and repetitive, but the paycheck is good, and the company I am down there, even better. To keep ourselves from going mad, we often tell each other stories. Since we're all over 18, we will often try and freak each other out. Despite the business being worth millions, the mailroom is still a bit of a throwback, and although our working area is fine, and the break room and bathrooms are clean, there are still a few old dark and dingy storage areas down there. I see myself as a bit of a master storyteller, and had been busy memorizing a much long creepy pasta as I could find to keep the mantle of King of Creepy going as I possibly could. Urban legends, crappy remakes and sequels to movies that no one had ever watched, so they didn't know how the plotline went. I loved it. As soon as my shift started, I had people begging me to tell them more and more spooky stuff. So, in a way, it was typical that what happened down in one of those dark, damp and dingy storerooms happened to me, as literally no one believed me. They all thought it was just another one of my stories, or that I was setting them up for a prank. But I wasn't. As I have already mentioned, the actual warehouse part where we spent most of our time, and the parts of the building that we used for bricks, was absolutely fine and had been fitted out with damp proofing, AC in the summer, heaters in the winter. But, shut away down various old corridors was the oldest part of the building where you only went once in a blue moon if you needed something specific. And it just so happened that a fuse had blown in the plug for the microwave and, me being me, volunteered to head down to one of the rooms designated as a random storage, as I was sure that I had seen a box of batteries and other stuff down there. It had been raining non-stop for the last week or so, and it smelled even damper than usual the further I headed. There was obviously electricity down there and lighting, just no heat, so it always smelled kind of rusty and a thick must. The walls even felt damp sometimes. The closer I got to the room, I thought that I could hear a sort of snuffling noise. I'm sure by now you figured I probably don't scare easy, but I still didn't want to come face to face with a rat, since they carry all sorts of nasty diseases. So, although not scared, I had my guard up, just in case. I did have my favorite work boots on, and I was a mean kicker especially during school football. The noise got louder as I approached the door of the storeroom. It almost sounded wet, like something swallowing. It's really hard to describe. I threw open the door, my leg out in front of me, ready to kick or stomp on something. I don't know. It just felt like I needed to be ready for something. I pulled on the cord for the light, and the moment the room was illuminated, I saw it. And I will tell you exactly what I saw the best that I can. It was big, not as big as me, but then I'm only 6'4", and not many people are, but I figured it was easily over five feet. Whatever this was, was standing upright, on two legs, just like you or me. It had very tiny arms that it held in front of itself. Not long, except it was at the side. It was very dark green, grainy looking, and scaly. I can 100% say that it looked lizard-like, because it had a very lizard head and face. It had a very long lizard mouth, and even a nose that looked very lizardy big, bugged-out yellow eyes on either side of its huge face. It looked freaky, but not necessarily fierce. This thing stood about 15 feet away from me, and was a small man-sized two-footed lizard. I was convinced I was looking at some sort of alien, some sort of lizard alien. It looked at me, and I looked at him, or her, or it. 
It was androgynous. I'm saying him. I have no damn idea what sex it was. I slowly backed out and slammed the door. I ran back to the mailroom and told the others what I'd seen. I was met with an eruption of laughter, clapped them on my back, and offered high fives. A couple of them said they believed me and came back down to the room to see for themselves. But of course, nothing. So it went down as a great prank, another super story. Only I knew what I saw. How it got down there, I have no idea. I know there are old windows on the far side of that storage room that could easily fit a large person through. But those haven't been messed with in a long time. And there are thick forest and woods surrounding the outside of this unit. Who knows? Do I really believe this thing came through the window and was stalking and waiting for the right time in that room? Not really. But I can't think of another reason why this thing was there. My granddad was a sailor, and he used to tell us all sorts of crazy stuff that he saw in the sea. In fact, a lot of the time, he would have a twinkle in his eye and the ghost of a smile as he told us, like the time he supposedly met Blackbeard the pirate, or discovered an underwater city of gold. But there was one story that no matter how many times he retold it, I never saw that twinkle, and that makes me think of the stuff he used to make up to entertain us. This particular tale was true to my belief. They were somewhere near the Caribbean when it happened. Now, before anybody jumps to conclusions, my grandfather has now been dead for at least 20 years. I heard this story when I was around 10, so that's 30 years ago and it happened when he was younger than I am now. So he was not inspired by or retelling of a famous movie featuring Jack Sparrow. He and the crew had been aboard the ship for around a week or so, and everything was going well. They were well on track for whatever their end destination was, and in good spirits. Most of the men at the time were below deck, doing what sailors do. That's when a large splash was heard. A very large splash. Not remotely unusual when you're in the middle of the ocean, of course. But something told him to look out over the side of the ship. At first, he couldn't see what manner of creature was responsible for the sound, but he could see ripples in the water below. He seemed to recall it was around dusk, so although the blazing sun wasn't high in the sky, it was by no means completely dark yet. He also wasn't in the slightest bit frightened, merely curious, as if it were somehow playing with him. The creature refused to come back up to the surface whilst he was watching. He could see bubbles, so he knew something was down there. A lot of the sea life he had encountered were quite nosy, and he'd seen many dolphins, and even an octopus come right up to the ship, as if to say, what are you doing in my ocean? Knowing these things can be playful, he stepped back from the side of the ship, so his sightline of the water was obscured. And sure enough, as soon as he had moved back, he heard two loud splashes again, and a bang, and something bumped up against the bottom of the ship. Still not thinking it was anything that would be a potential threat, he raced back over to try and catch a glimpse. And he was rewarded by catching sight of the very end of a vibrant aqua green tail fin diving back under the water. He remembers thinking that it was the most beautiful color. And also, what on earth must be the fish that the tail fin was on. By now, his curiosity had peaked, but was still not afraid. Backing away slowly, he made sure he was out of sight, but this time, he crept quietly to the edge of the ship so that it could pop up instantly and see what was down there. 
maybe he discovered a new breed of fish. As I said, he was curious and now excited to see exactly what was playing hide and seek with him. He heard a bump and a splash and this time shot up as quick as he could to look over the side. As I have said, whenever Granddad told us about meeting Long Zhong Silver or surviving a battle with a Kraken, we knew he was full of it, embellishing things to entertain us. He'd get really animated as he told us, and it often ended up with him making us jump and then smothering us in kisses. But I swear, when he told us this, there was none of that. If you can believe it, he actually paled, and there was a slight tremor to his voice. That was because this time, when he looked over, he did catch a fleeting glance of what was playing with him. It was a mermaid. Don't be fooled for one second that this thing had anything in common with Ariel. The best way that he was able to describe its body was that it looked like Nosferatu with long hair, a gnarled bony body, and a fin. Can you even imagine that? Nosferatu's twisted features with huge warped fangs, wide gaping eyes, but instead of a bald head, long straggly wet hair covered and thick in seaweed. Then, instead of a human body, the rancid, almost concave bony structure with visible ribs and two shriveled, wrinkled chest bones. The only thing to indicate properly that it was indeed a creature of another world. The only thing similar to the Disney film was her fin, which was indeed quite beautiful, and the scale shimmered in the setting sun. Of course, as soon as the creature realized it had been seen, it dove back under the water and never resurfaced. Granddad said of course they all knew the legends of sirens who were meant to be beautiful enchantresses who lured sailors with their beauty and song and then usually killed them and ate them. If that had been a siren, then it must have taken a very drunk or desperate man to succumb. Whatever it was, it absolutely terrified my father and my granddad. He never saw anything like it again. But a year or so after that, he stopped sailing permanently and swore to always stay on land from then on out. Thanks for hearing my story. My determination to never own a car is what ultimately led up to the building blocks of this very story. I can't afford to completely live off the grid, but I do everything I can to distance myself from life of dependence. You know, I don't use money unless I have to. I won't be caught dead using a bank. I earn only as much money as I'll have to use. Everything else I try to accomplish with my own two hands. The system wants to shackle these hands. Your hands too. I think it's because of the determination to resist that I ended up having this encounter in the first place. Some of the money that I can't do without is my bus fare. I will not own a vehicle. so. I need to get to where I'm going with the buses that are always crawling all over Manhattan. It's not a bad way to do things. It beats being tied down to a payment and repairs and maintenance costs. Gosh, and freaking insurance. So, when you're taking the bus as often as I, you get to know the patterns of the faces of the people that you see. You get a feel for who works in the morning or who has errands to run in the afternoon, or who the night workers are. Just for the hay of it, I began taking different buses just to see the different crowds. It took me several runs to see it, but I began to catch on to that no matter which bus I was on, there was always one person that always was there with me. He was an old man that looked like an old woman if you didn't look close enough. He looked a little on the homeless side, 
a little on the mentally ill side. He looked a little on every side. A virtual human kaleidoscope with an oversized cowboy hat that's been crushed more than once. A Hawaiian shirt that was usually unbuttoned and pink shorts and sneakers. He was always carrying some variation of paper or plastic shopping bags. He never smiled and never really made eye contact with anyone. You'd think somebody that loud would stand out right away. But I can't describe the way he always kind of blended in with everything. I mean, he was so out there. He was ordinary. Anyway, no matter which bus I took, there was at some point a crazy idea beginning to form in the back of my head that would not be ignored. I got the notion that he was following me. So, I was going to follow him back. The first few times I tailed him, I really didn't think he was aware of me, but I've been doing things long enough to know the revelation comes with persistence. He would stay on the bus for several cycles to the route, as if it were a means of sightseeing. But then, he would get off at a stop and sit down and wait for another bus. Then, he'd ride that one through its route several times. I don't think I ever observed him stopping to use the bathroom anywhere. He just kept going. My bladder and bowels would always seem to scream before his did. Things came to a head that day, and I had finally given up and decided that he was just a derelict old man that had nothing better to do with his twilight years than surf the mass transit system the way most people of later generations surf the internet. Well, then he got off of the downtown junction where all the routes converged at once. He got off the bus, waited for another one, got on. I kid you not, no more than 10 minutes later, a completely different bus arrived and the same guy got off, waited, got on. Either those buses did some serious moving in 10 minutes, or something else was up. I did some acid back in my younger days, and I started to wonder if those permanent tendencies towards flashbacks were a culprit. But the notion started to gel in my head that there was one of him on every single bus at any given time. The more I shadowed him, the more I watched how often the buses would trade him at the junction that became the only viable explanation. I started going to ridiculous lengths, working longer hours so I could have more money to buy those little micro cams that are so cheap nowadays. I could collect footage from different buses. I know that sounds crazy, but the way we're kept asleep and oblivious to all this stuff is even crazier. Catching on to this was just part of the way I was becoming awakened. Sure enough, he was everywhere. Nobody else was everywhere, just him. He never met himself. His movements were perfectly coordinated so that two of him would never be seen in the same place at the same time. I couldn't think of any purpose this arrangement would serve until it hit me while I was relocating one of my cameras. Surveillance. He they were somebody's eyes and ears it would be too obvious if it were the bus driver put it up to somebody that is so ordinary and so quiet that nobody gives them a second look i felt woke in that moment i felt empowered i had all the footage i needed to make my case and put together like a documentary all i needed was something involving a confrontation candid footage of me calling him out without giving him a chance to rehearse. I made my move at one of the times that he was at the downtown junction very early on in the morning when he was really the only person there. I came on strong, like I might know even more than I was letting on. His eyes roamed me up and down like some sort of mechanical scan. I became aware of a hissing sound that coincided with his breathing. He looked me in the eyes, 
but then somehow looked into me. I felt invaded, like he could see me without my clothes on. My vision tunneled, and he was at the focus of it all. Then, his lips moved and made some series of syllables that I couldn't derive words from. Green scales appeared on his skin, as if they had been retracted inside of his pores or something. A long tongue even darted out between his lips and wagged at me, and he made the first facial expression I had ever seen on him. A sinister grin, revealing multiple pointed jagged teeth. Then, I felt like I was hit in the face with a sledgehammer. I woke up, underneath one of the small trees surrounding the downtown junction. I didn't know how long I was out, but it felt late. I wasn't missing anything. I had one of the cams in the breast pocket of my hoodie when he turned snake-like in front of me. I thought I was going to strike a big one in the name of Woke. But when I got my cams and stuff home, they had been wiped. All footage I'd ever taken just showed white noise. What's more, all of his copies disappeared, and I never saw him or anyone like him again. I've heard about snake people being in the upper areas of business and government, but I got a serious chill thinking about what they would want by taking their game all the way down to the bottom, watching over ordinary people like me that blow in and out of the wind like litter. Are they keeping tabs on all of us that closely? And what kind of voodoo was it that knocked me out? A spoken word cut my lights out. Maybe that's how they work. Maybe that's part of how they hide in the broad daylight. They don't just blend in. They got some kind of voodoo magic going on. I don't know. Like some sort of supernatural power. Look out if you keep seeing someone familiar on public transportation. They might just be a sleeper cell, waiting, listening, watching. I remember in fifth grade, we got a substitute teacher that stayed much longer than any sub should have. She was large and loud, and the only part of her that wasn't ridiculously big was her feet. Her thighs were like freak of nature beets that had slender roots for her to walk on. We kept asking her when Mrs. Wimmer was going to come back. She would just tell us soon enough but we lost track of how long our real teacher was absent. It had to have been weeks. One day, she told us that we're going to watch a film so amazing that we would watch it for the duration of the day, breaking only for lunch and recess. I had no idea what kind of film would run for so long. Just before she started up the film, I had to get up and use the bathroom. I should have asked for permission but it hit me so hard that I couldn't risk a no. When I got back, the television rack was already in front of the class and white static filled the screen. Those of you old enough to remember those days know that meant the video was starting soon. But the video never started. I stared, patiently waiting for the black leader of the first few inches of film to be read. It never did. While I was waiting, everyone in the classroom burst out into laughter. It died down. It was as if something funny had happened on the TV. It happened again. I looked into the static with confusion. There was nothing there. No sound, nothing. It was one of those screens that were rounded. Such were the old makes. In a corner... I saw a reflection of the lamp at the teacher's desk, and the teacher's face lit up by it. And the reflection, distorted all kinds of ways, was something that made me catch my breath once I worked it out. Something just as scaly and hideous as a crocodile was sitting at that desk. I whirled around to see the very human teacher sitting behind the desk, but she was looking straight at me, 
and the eyes I saw then were the same eyes I saw in the corner of the TV screen reflection. There was more laughter around me from everybody, and the teacher smiled, a very evil, sinister smile. I feigned illness for as long as possible until my act fell apart. By then, weeks later, there wasn't a classroom to go back to. One of my classmates went on to do extremely violent acts. His excuse was that the teacher had taught him both through lessons and through videos that it was the right thing to do. As far as I know, that substitute teacher was never known of. I've used Google and white pages and all else using what little information about her I could find. It's like tracking down a ghost or a chameleon that disappears into the background. Either way, seeing that crocodile of a person left me terrified and I have no idea if she came from this earth or another planet or the pits of hell itself. All I know is that it assuming that's what it was, disguised itself as a person because its intentions were not the same 